I would love in that environment, because when else can you get so many of those dudes together? I'd right. love in that environment to be able to say, hey, dude, we're meeting downstairs. We're going to meet at that little pizza place, the Golden yeah. Nugget. And hey, man, even if it's just for an hour, stay however long you want. Come down, just say hi. But dude, I sure would love to sit there and have a have a little a little drink and, and discuss things that only tournament directors, right, coaches, right. manage you know, managers can understand, you know? It, it's funny you bring that up. So in 2005, the very first, I got on my notes here, World Series history. So the very first year, we didn't, we never, a lot of guys had never met each other because the East and the West came together for the first time. So the East Coast guys knew each other and the West Coast, but there wasn't a whole lot of like, if you're from California, you didn't know anybody from New York other than the message board. So we all met at the host hotel, all the coach, every team had to have a rep. Right. So mostly it was the coach. Right. We all met in a room and we went over what our nickname was on the message board and we went over the rules and all that kind of stuff. And I remember the bluegrass. It was Chris. I think it was Chris Jones. who was uh, must have been like 22 years old at the time. Bigger Chris, you know. Yeah. He's like, well, I don't know what the internet is, and I don't know what you know. He's like, but we just got a carrier pigeon send us a letter saying there's a tournament out here in California. So, but that was their early days, and so I kind of wanted to touch upon that a little bit about. Yeah, like, for sure. Uh, so, like during the championship game when it was in Palm Springs, there was nothing going on in Palm Springs other than the softball. So everybody came back to the field. So that championship game. There was like standing. Cool. It was like it was like people like lining up both sides of the field, Got it, um, and just that was the party that night. Yeah. And that's the downside that people say about moving to Vegas is like once their team's eliminated, they got Vegas, right? They don't have to come back to the field. So, and anyway. you know that's one of the things I've talked about, Jeff. With you know people talk about different tournaments and what they have to offer and all. One of the things that they like about the tournament that we throw in Walks and Hatch is there's really not where anywhere to go. The right. city, yeah, you know, it's yeah. such a small town that it actually invites the environment of hanging together so teams get to hang together you know mm -hmm. more often team uh, uh like teams themselves get to hang together but then you hang out with other teams hey dude i'll meet you over there that's oh, cool we're hanging out there too right and but you don't have the environment that the world series has so there it's cool because quality run tournaments obviously you know and all but at the same time you get something different man you know yeah. still have turf fields that's mm -hmm. awesome uh, now and uh, next year, all six of them will be turfed. So, hey, turf fields right before Vegas. Right. If you plan early enough, which I've already announced that in you know, the 2022 date, thankfully, because they were willing to bend the rules for us and, and let us have it. Uh, now I'm hoping, man, you know, make your plans in advance. You're, you're, whether you go down there, if I had it in March or if I had it right before the World Series, like I'm doing, like I've done now, you're still going to spend the same kind of money flying here. You're still going to spend the same. Everything's going to be the same. Just now you have a year to plan it. And right. I think it's a really neat thing to see where you're at. If you're really, if your team's, you know, serious about the competition or you're a new team like uh, Houston, you know, uh, uh, they, they are inviting that competition. They are freaking like, they're excited to go to St. Louis next year. Right. You know, they were excited to come down here to see what these big teams are about. And look what happens, dude. Like we've, we've talked about all the time. It is it's neat to, to especially be a new team and not be afraid of the competition and then go, holy shit, look what we just did, dude. We beat this, we beat this team that's been around for a little while, right, you know, man, right. yeah. And I, I mean, that's what it's supposed to be about, I think, when you go to these yeah. tournaments. There's something to that. So the old Dayton days, man, that, like the city shut down to for the tournament. And I mean, like, like there's to keep in mind, Dayton's, you know, a small town or whatever like that. So like the people would bring RVs and stuff out there to come and they would follow like, New York PD always had a big following. These people would follow the New York PD team from field to field to watch them. And I've never seen anything. It was, it was the closest I've ever been to being in a professional environment as far as having a fan base and just because, because everyone's got, you know, their, you know, like, like when I roll with the Alliance, you know, I got my little fan base of people going to be cheering for us. Right. But to have strangers cheering for you, or mo in our case, they're always cheering against us because we're California. Right. Yeah. So, but whatever the case, we felt like the, uh, you know, the invading army and like, you know, but it was something because Dayton was just like, I mean, it was like this city invited like, hey, the city of Dayton invites, you know, the blah, 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 you know, police softball tournament. And to see the whole city roll out the red carpet. Um, Absolutely. That's pretty impressive. That's uh, and, and again, everything you're saying right now is on a smaller scale when it comes to to Waxahachie. And of course, it just happened. So it's fresh in my mind. And I'm always happy because. Like, uh, like, uh, you know, Joe, uh, like Joe and I talk about, you know how it is, dude, you start, 
you start running up closer to the tournament and it's like, oh man, why am I doing this? Why, why am I not just concentrating on this? And then you, hey, I get, and then you, you, but you know, you push through and it's when you get there and you're like, this is why. And you, and if you do it enough, you realize, if you do it enough, you realize that's all I got to do, man. I just got to make it to the tournament and then I'll be reminded <laughs> again why it was all worth it. Yeah. The first, I, I swear to you, the first three Three years that Dell and I ran the World Series in Palm Springs. Every year we say we're not going to do it again. Too much work, too much hassle. <laughs> and then it got to be where uh, everyone kind of got, I mean, they got used to it. They got used to the rules. There wasn't all the draw. And now, and then it got to be kind of on autopilot. You know yeah. what I mean? So right now yeah. it's on autopilot. It's, you know, yeah, exactly. guys know, guys know, like don't bring illegal players, don't, you know. But yeah. we had to deal with all stuff early on. It was yeah. a lot of drama early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Hey. Let me get my partner on here in just a second. Let's see how oh, he's still, he's at work. And when he's at work, this is what you get. Always, always busy. I'm done. I'm still here. Though. <laughs> all right, what's man. Up, hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, all right, boys. Well, hey, I'm excited to get this one going. It's 7.04. Uh, you good, Joe? Good, man. All right, Jeff, we'll see you here in a second. And Joe, thanks for joining us again, brother. I always appreciate it. See you in a minute. All right. God damn, that's work, Joe, right there. Oh, work, Joe. It's all right. At least he's here. I'm happy about that. Let's roll it, Deanna. Excited about this one, everyone. It's episode 38 of the PS, well, of the PS, of the Police Softball Podcast, but I'm excited because it's the all about the PoliceSoftball.com World Series preview today. So, hey, I'm excited. Really got a lot of good information, great information, actually. And what we're going to do is get the show on the road. If you don't know who I am, I am Trini Trinidad. I am a United States Air Force veteran. I'm Audrey's husband first, which Audrey says that she loves my cup from Waikiki Beach. Pretty cool, huh? So we're going to make it a little episode. I got a lot of cups, man. I've never used them. So I'm going to start showing some of those and, I, and get some use out of them. Hey, so uh, I'm a U.S. Air Force veteran, 23-year law enforcement veteran, two-time cancer survivor, a franchise business owner of a business called Biotech's Crime and Trauma Scene Cleaning. We are franchised in multiple cities. I am a nonprofit founder of our wonderful organization, Shields for Kids. We go out and provide for kids in the community that are in need. And we pride ourselves in these officers being off duty on their own dime and on their own time to be able to show these children how much we care about them. Got a great golf tournament coming up here soon. And Joe, my partner, just got done with his golf tournament. Excited to see how that went. Oh, my God. Who put World Traveler? <laughs> I do a little bit of traveling. <laughs> Deanna, you got me. Uh, do a little bit of traveling. Hey, as far as police softball is concerned, though, I am the coach of the San Antonio Law Men's Competitive Softball Team. We've won a couple of national titles. I'm the Chevy Wright Sportsman of the Year uh, winner. I'm very proud of all these things, man. These Pat Hill Inspiration Award winner, uh, Texas Police Athletic Federation, and PS.com Hall of Fame inductee. I am the possible starting second baseman for Louisville Sluggers, and... I'm very fortunate to have been awarded the 2019 Outstanding Police Officer of the Community Award, and I really enjoy that award. Uh, it's cool. I, I enjoy my service to my country, to my community, and ultimately uh, through my nonprofit. Hey, we got my partner in crime coming up, Mr. Joe Monahan. What's going on, Joe? It's been a long week, man. I know it has, man. I know it's been a it long, has. Long week. Well, wow, it's been a long couple of months. For you. Yeah. Yeah, you this know? this week's been a, a rough one, man. Yeah. So, um, but I'm still here. I'm supposed to be off about three, and I'm I'm still here. Luckily, we got wrapped up pretty good. So, 
Well, we appreciate what you do. I was able to hop on. Nah, I'm serious. We appreciate what you do for uh, for your community. I told, over there. I told these guys we got we got to get on this podcast, and uh, we're gonna push everything else off to the morning. <laughs> we'll go hit that other house in the morning. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Well, Mr. Joe Monahan is the coach of the Missouri Lawman. He is a Show Me Classic Tournament director. He's the coach of the Louisville Sluggers Masters Division team and the East Conference Manager of the Year. But he's my friend, and I'm very happy to have you here, brother. Not the same without you. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Well, uh, hey, we got Carrie over here. Let's see here. What's up? Trini, Trini, that. Hope all, all is well. It is. We got Justin Michael, flag football, keepers of the peace. Got you, Deanna. Uh, keepers of the peace, uh, uh, flag football champions this year at the tournament. Very proud of these guys. Linda Garcia says, good to know. Linda, big fan of SA Law, but also Jeff, which is my guest. Uh, Linda goes over there every year, and here's a great example. I'm going to bring Jeff on real quick. Hey, Jeff. Hey. Linda Garcia, great example of um, a person who goes to the tournaments initially to root for, for me. Then she's rooting for the team. And now she absolutely, she knows the teams. She knows the players. She talks to everybody. I mean, it, it's, it's such a wonderful thing to be able to bring people into our community of, of law enforcement softball. And, and it would not be on the stage that it is without you and Dell, man. So thank you guys very much. And, you know, everybody, of course, that that contributes to it. I don't mean to cut anyone else out, right. but you know, being the founders, man. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you, Jeff. I do this often. Sure. Talk to you in a minute. Hey, Tommy Eldridge, Thomas Eldridge. Hey, Trini, Joe and Jeff. All right. Hey, so hey, what up, Jeff, here's what we're going to go. Joe, we're going to do is we're going to talk about my subscribers, man. Check this out. I'm super excited. As of Wednesday, the 29th at 5 13 PM, I have 859 subscribers to our, ooh, 870, Deanna just updated me. 870 subscribers to the YouTube channel. Now, why is that important? That is important because we, I need 1,000 subscribers to be able to, 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours to be able to get my YouTube channel out there to more people, be able to put paid, paid marketing behind it. And ultimately, man, through Keepers of the Peace, and of course, through Shields for Kids, I want to just positively affect people's lives, you know. So I get to do that, my community with the police softball community and also my friends and family and everybody that's on uh, social media is, is helping me to get there quickly. I'm super excited about that. So if you want to help me out um, in, in order to be able to help more people, I need 141 more people. And let me show you how to subscribe real quick. Check this out. What you got to do is you got to check, you gotta search for Trinity Trinidad. You're going to go to my filter and you're going to hit channel. Hit that vacation photo of me and subscribe. Now, here's what I think. I think that I had 240 something subscribers at the time that we made that. Deanna, we definitely have to change that before the next podcast. But that is the old way to do it. I do believe you can just search for Trinity Trinidad and I do believe you can find me. So I would appreciate your help. The other thing, Joe, is we got our 2022 tournament for the Keepers of the Peace National Softball Championships. We, that is taking place in Waxahachie, Texas again. A great pro first responder town, September the 8th through 10th again in 2022. Really excited about it. You have uh, almost a whole year to prepare for that, man. And it's a great lead up. Like I was talking to Jeff, it's a great lead up before the World Series. I'm excited to be able to have those fields turfed. Because for us here in Texas, or at least in San Antonio, we don't get a lot of opportunities to play on turf fields. So we go out to Vegas, it's a little different. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a great warm-up. Come down here, get used to that turf, and then head up there and uh, and go. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Hey, Trini, what we need yeah. is everybody that's watching, listening, uh, we need you guys to tell your family members and your friends to hop on and subscribe as well because – you know, I'm sure everyone that's listening and watching probably already has subscribed. So let's let's spread spread the word and let's get to a thousand. I appreciate that, Joe. Yeah, man. Thank you because I, I promise to you one thing that I, I've talked about is it's extremely difficult to get on these to, to uh, allow yourself to be vulnerable in social media. You you allow your your people to come into your personal lives. They get to know your family. You know, they see your house. They see they see things, and uh, you know, you get emotional. You want to share something for the betterment of others, and you, you that's out there you know and that's not an easy thing to do so i, I want to continue to do it it provides me value and i'd appreciate that support so thanks you brother thank you 
All right. So, hey, Joe, we got us a really neat uh, pro. Hey, I'll tell you what, Deanna, real quick. Can you send that message? Uh, what you up, Mark? What? Tell you what we're going to do is let me let my, let my boy know. Uh, hey, did you, uh, Deanna, can you do me a favor and send him that, uh, that log on? All right. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do is while we're waiting for our special guest, we're going to introduce our other guest. I already brought him on. Uh, Mr. Jeff Blair is one. Let's see here what we got. All right. So we sent the link. Jeff, what's going on, brother? Ready to rock, man. Yeah, man. Well, Jeff Blair, if you guys don't know, pretty sure we got him. There you go. He is law enforcement officer for 31 years. He is a retired deputy chief of the Tustin Police Department in California. He is the PS.com co-founder. He is a, well, that's an important thing. I don't want to skip that because this is the PS.com or PoliceSoftball.com World Series preview. So PS.com co-founder is a very important thing. It allows us all to get together on a wider scale than what we would normally be used to. And uh, Jeff and, and Del Pickney founded that, and uh, they're supported by a lot of great people that allow this tournament to take place every year. There you go. Ah, that's a badass picture right there. Yeah, man. So, uh four-time Majors Division Champion and a two-time Masters Division Champion. He's a 2013 PS.com Hall of Fame inductee. Jeff, thank you so much for being here, brother. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm as excited as everybody else is. I don't even play anymore, and I am just uh, can't wait to get out there and see the first game. And that uh, Every time I hear the first pitch being thrown on th Thursday morning at the crack of dawn, it's just like another year is here, man. We're blessed. Blessed to be here because we lost last year. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, Jeff. I'm going to let you stay on, but we are introducing a new segment to the program. And this is something that uh, we are going to be doing. I'm going to let Joe kind of describe what's about to happen, but we're going to introduce this new segment. I'm super excited. It's going to be very entertaining. And we call this segment, Joe, what do we call it? Well, well f first, I want to say oh, okay. that th th this segment, it, it, this isn't like, <laughs> this isn't going to be the first, you know, this is going to be the debut of the segment. This is just kind of the explanation of the segment, and we're bringing yeah. on who's going to be on that segment. So, this, but basically, it's it, the name was Tater Talk with Shane Monick. Wait talked, a minute. What's that? Tater Talk with Shane Monick. We talked about it on, uh, <laughs> we talked about it. Look at that pretty face. We talked about it a little bit. Um, I believe on the last podcast or during the broadcast of uh, the last few games in Texas. But, but anyway, it's going to be something where, where Shane um, goes around at these tournaments and uh, has conversations with people on different teams and, you know, uh, and we're going to put those conversations. Yeah, we're cut them up, but you're selling them on it short, dude. You're selling it short. It, Shane gonna, just doesn't have normal it's conversations. It's going to be pretty good. Shane, Shane, <laughs> Shane's, Shane's pretty good. He likes to talk, and I think he, he's going to be great at it. Honestly. Well, let's introduce the man of the minute, the host of, let's bring it up again, Tater Talk. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> there he is, Mr. <laughs> Shane Monig. What's going on, brother? Not what are you doing, man? man? I am uh, me and me and my partner Chris Silman. We are uh, we're working the uh, bootleg detail uh, for bootleg shirts at the Little Baby uh, Little Dirk concert here uh, in St. Louis. Uh, we got thirteen thousand uh, fans here. Uh, the smell of uh, herbs and uh and, and stuff for her or spices. <laughs> yeah and spices uh it's uh there's a, yeah it, it it's a little crazy there's only been a like two shootings out of the last four little dirt little baby concerts so we're, we're looking for bootleg share people tonight uh, uh we haven't had a concert like this in the area in a while so it, yeah. it's funny well, we're hey. in the parking lot people are looking at us <laughs> You know, you got to, you got to, you got to prioritize these things. It's bootleg shirts. Then we deal with the shootings after that. You know what I mean? I, I, I agree. Hey, it, it, it'll, you know, it, it's not, you know, and we don't want to say shootings. Uh, we'll, we'll critical incidents. So, you know, we'll go, we'll go with that. It's, uh, hey, well, Shane, you, you know, we've got this, uh, we got this tater talk with Shane Modic. Man, give us a little idea of what you're thinking you're going to be doing to bring to the segment here in the near future. You know, I think I think guys, we, you know, at, at our tournaments and and even 
in that tournament time where reach out to people not only known known players on 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 the bigger teams but the smaller teams people may, may not know about and not only hit them with like uh questions related to softball some work related questions but you know uh, maybe where they got their first kiss or uh you know or, or what, <laughs> what their favorite uh you know what, what their favorite muscacholi is you know i mean uh, just I don't know. Just odd off the wall questions. I I, I wouldn't want to let the questions get out yet because you want to surprise yes, them. For you sure. want some spot, spot, uh, spontaneous. Uh, you spontaneous. Be right. You'll be all right. Spontaneous. Get it down by next a long show and you'll day. Be yeah. No. Yeah. We'll, we'll be hey, good. We, uh, once Shane gets going, he's good. Once once he starts that flow, <laughs> once he starts flowing, he he'll be good. He'll be good. It's going to be I, an entertaining I, segment. I can tell you that. Yeah, I, I, I was at Bill Burr last night, a friend of mine. I got oh, Bill I Burr. love Bill Burr, dude. Trini, my face hurts. I was like, hey, it was second row. And, and of uh, course, I couldn't get my phone out, but it, uh, it, 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 it was awesome. My, I, I, I'm taking mental notes on what I want to ask, uh, you know, people as we go through, you know. So, and, and I, 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 oh, dude, it's, I laughed my ass off. I laughed my ass off. It was good. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's good. the thing. Not only are you going to be doing it this the World Series, I'm sure you're going to get us a lot of content there at the World Series in Vegas here soon. Uh, so, you know, if you see Shane coming, don't, don't run. run. Don't run. You know, just hide walk. The, because hide if he babies. sees you run, if he sees you run, he's probably going to run after you. And then he's going to probably corner you into answering a question. But, hey, I'll well, tell you what. It's, they better be slow if he's catching them. Yeah, Jesus. well. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, because Joe's gonna run me nine games in the outfield. So, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Shane. I know we gotta. I know you're you're working, and I know you couldn't be on too long. But hey, we got a little picture, and uh, yeah, I don't know if this made the paper where you're from, or uh, but let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Nice. That's 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 where Tater Talk <laughs> originated when. Shane, <laughs> Officer Shane Monig would go into elementary schools and talk to kids, and that's where the tater talk with Shane Monig originated. We're going to bring it to the softball world. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that that was Dr. Seuss uh, weekend. Theodore Geisler's birthday, old Dr. Seuss. So uh, we, we get to we get to put uniforms on and get out of our shirt and ties, and we get to go in and. Uh, and read books sometimes, so it's fun. Yeah, that's like going to be cool, dude. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I'm super excited you're going to do this for us. I know you don't have to. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, it's going to be a, a great time. And and Shane, can I see your partner one more time? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Chris, he can't <laughs> hear you, but yeah. What's up, Chris? <laughs> uh, what, so a, what, a, what a great time for him during that part time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, he... he. <laughs> He and I, we, we drove to Omaha once for training, and he said it, the, the eight-hour trip was like three hours or two hours with me because we had, we had a good time. So Yeah, well, I'm excited, Shane. Thank out. you so much, brother. I appreciate uh, you uh, right, uh, doing this for us. Shane Monick with Tater Talk. See you, brother. <laughs> See you, boys. Thank you, man. Be good. Holla. See you, man. Bye. Is that the are, – are we using the Swami entry music or whatever no, that is? Swami's got new entry for, music. For the tater talk? That yeah. sounded similar to that, I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah. Swami's, Swami's good, man. He's good. I can't wait for him to show up. In fact, check this comment out. Let's see here. Check this out. The Swami ball predictions have a ridiculous accuracy percentage. And if I took into if I took it into a casino, I'd be banned from Vegas, <laughs> like Dana White. <laughs> when Dana Swami White walked had, out of there, the Swami has been on these last few <laughs> years. I'll say that. All right, all right. So hey, listen, what we're gonna do is get this preview on the, the this preview on the road. Let's get the show on the road. We've got all right. So hey, Jeff, tell you what we're gonna do, man. I'm gonna let you go ahead and introduce the um, you know, of course, the World Series history. So people have an understanding, if they don't, of what's going on. I want to say uh, hello to Karina Martins. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. D-Mart, they were just recently married. They came down to, uh, Deanna and I are fighting. They came down to Waxahachie, man, from California to be able to help us out. And uh, we appreciate you guys coming down. And happy, happy marriage to you guys. Congratulations to you guys. All right, let's do it. Jeff, let's go through some history, man. Okay, so uh, most of you guys know the, the website, policesoftball.com, started, you know, right after the internet kind of like became a thing. Uh, Dell and I were working graveyards in Tough Town, Tustin, California. We met at a, 
you know, like cops do work in graveyards on a slow night, park car to car on a cold night. And he it's in the off season. And he says, Hey, I want to start a website uh, to where we can um, have people advertise their softball, their police softball tournaments, because back in the day, the only time you would learn about where the tournaments are is if somebody would mail you a flyer to your station um, and then they'd hang it in the briefing wall and whatnot. So um, today it's a great idea. So I went on every civilian softball message board I could find across the country and directed all the cops or, you know, law enforcement to, to come check out police softball.com and our message board. Like uh, we didn't plan on having a message board initially, but the message board blew up to where, and it was anonymous back then. So it got really, really nasty. Um, so th there was some big, like the New York teams were going at it big time back then and no one really knew each other. So anyway, long story short is shortly after launching the message board, I told Dell, I said, Hey man, I, I think we can take this bigger than just having a, a chat room and, uh, and a place to advertise tournaments. Let's have a world series and let's bring all these teams together. So at the time it was nearly impossible to get the fields of big league dreams. There was only a couple fields back then and Palm Springs was the marquee one. That was the main field. And somehow I convinced those guys to give us a weekend in October. And uh, we started advertising the world series around like May and uh, pushed it hard on the website. I mean, we put a lot of work into the website previews on every team and whatnot. And, um, lo and behold, uh, we did it our first year. We had 32 teams, uh, it was a huge success. The Ohio Lawman won the first ever World Series. And the thing just took off from then. It grew from 32 teams to 50-something teams. And eventually, we literally outgrew Palm Springs to where there was no hotel big enough to host all our people. There's only five fields there. We needed more fields. We needed more days. Um, and in 2010, uh, we moved it to the brand-new facility at the time in Las Vegas, and uh, by that time, our reputation um, was solidified. The mayor of Las Vegas came out and threw out the first pitch. And the rest is like we talk about the World Series. The rest is history, man. It's been since 2005. The only year we missed was the COVID year. And I'll tell you guys right now, it's always the second weekend in October. So for all you guys that are struggling to get a time off of work right now, I'm telling you right now in 2022, it's going to be the second weekend in Vegas. So put in your time slips now. And for all you guys that are like uh, it, with the wives at home, right? Like, oh my God, she's having a baby in October. Back that up nine months. The second week in October is going to be the World Series every year. Just you, you could, you, yeah, put, dude. Hey, hey, don't, <laughs> don't have sex right. Right. Yeah, at the sucks. wrong time, man. It's pretty damn simple. <laughs> Figure it out on the calendar and mark it every year and just go, look, we're going to, we're going to spend a little time away from each other during this if we have to, you know? Or you could be like my wife did. So there was a big tournament in Tahoe, and she, she knew how big it was to me back in the days before the World Series. She induced labor two weeks early <laughs> so, so I could go to the tournament. Uh, my so, wife would do that. That's and second week in October, every year, boom, not going to miss it. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's, that's what it. I'm ex and that's what I'm excited about. You know, Joe's tournament, you know, the St. Louis Show Me Classic, pretty much. What, what, which weekend is it? First weekend in August every year. First weekend in August. Ours is now uh, the September or the um, uh, yeah September 11th you know weekend, and then you've got the World Series. Always always the same amount of time. You can pencil those things in, and, and it's a done deal. So awesome, man. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Manny. Thanks for joining us, brother. I'm excited to have Manny back, man. Manny hurt, you know. Uh, Joe, he was hurt, pulled his uh, bicep. But he'll be in Vegas. Enough. Yeah, he'll be in Vegas. He's going to be limited. We want to make sure we take care of his health, but at least we've we've got him. We're running a little short in Vegas, so I'm happy to have him back. I'm so that's going to be awesome. Well. Yeah, man. So, uh, hey, uh, Jeff, we've got the World Series medal and softball photo here. Let's check this out. Yeah, man. That's really cool, man. When you, when you talk about medals and, you know, you talk about the professionalism of a tournament, Look at those balls. That's not just a normal stamp. You know, that's pretty involved. If you've never been to the World Series, I, I continue to invite teams from Texas. I'm trying to get as many as I can to go and experience it. And, uh, you know, you receive a medal like that and you realize how many teams are we up to now, Jeff? I know you're going to talk about it, I'm sure, later, but how many teams do we so have shown? We were at 72 up until two weeks ago and we lost two, but we're at 70. That's <laughs> You want We've to been higher. When we did Masters, we were up to 80, and then yeah. we separated Masters because it just got too congested. Yep. Yeah. Um, so 70. 
Super impressive, man. You want to see the best of the best. You want to see the variety of teams. And more importantly, you want to participate in something that offers uh, some serious camaraderie. I mean, you, you, can, you don't get a bigger tournament than this. So it's awesome. Hey, so what makes this special? And I tell people all the time to include my family. They don't just show up for softball. They show up for the opening ceremonies. So, Jeff, we're going to talk about the opening ceremonies itinerary and, and just give them a feel for if you've never been or maybe, you know, you, you let your husbands or whoever they are go. You're, maybe your brother goes and plays. You might want to consider going because it's a special feeling at these opening ceremonies. What you got, Jeff? So this is this is a big deal to me. And uh, Trini and I, before the show started, we were talking about back when the tournament was in Palm Springs, there wasn't a lot to do in Palm Springs. So come Sunday afternoon when the championship game was going down, everybody came back to the fields. Now, a lot of the California teams would start driving home. But so all the East Coast teams, they weren't flying out till Monday morning. So they had really nothing to do. They came back to the fields. And on Sunday night, man, that place was electric. It was, I mean, it was like nothing I've ever experienced before or since. Um, we can't exactly do that in Vegas because Vegas, we're competing with the nightlife of Vegas. And now we have so many teams, we've had to stagger out the days to where there's a championships on Saturday, championships on Sunday. The closest thing we can get to that is during the opening ceremony on Friday nights because every team is still alive. Every team's in the tournament. And it's really important to come out and make it a priority. If you make anything else a priority this weekend, come out between like 5 p.m. I think it's going to last about two hours to 7 p.m. And it, that's when you're going to see the camaraderie. There's a player party being hosted by Garrett Metal Detectors. Free beer until we run out. We're going to have the award ceremonies, the Hall of Fame inductions. We're going to have uh, the Home Run Derby finale, which, I mean, you win the Home Run Derby, you win an AR-15 patrol rifle. I mean, what a prize. And then we're going to have the marquee game, which is the coach's game, which is going to be a blast. Um, so that's all going to happen on Friday night. So when you talk about the opening ceremony, if you do nothing else in Vegas, like don't schedule a dinner between five and seven on Friday night, come to the field um, and just partake in the experience of the brotherhood of police softball when everyone's going to be there. Cause you're not going to see it the rest of the weekend because people are coming and going. Absolutely. And here's my, my take on that. And Joe, I'll let you comment on that here in a second. My take on this is if you, if you're not interested in, as much in the camaraderie, if you're not interested as much as, as feeling that feeling of having so many like-minded people in one area that are all there to enjoy a sport that we all love along with the camaraderie. I mean, I get it. Go to some tournaments, don't show up, but man, you can't, you will, you cannot help but feel the, um, solidarity, the uh, devotion to our community service, then you will there. I mean, you get to, you get to enjoy two wonderful things, man. Our, com our love for our, com our community and, and the service we provide along with, uh, you know, that uh, respect that we pay to, uh, towards our country, you know, by the presentation of the colors and, and, and then recognizing, you know, people that we recognize at those opening ceremonies. So I think it's badass, Joe. I think it's a great atmosphere, uh, the way you've done it recently with the uh, – because you used to have the player party at the at the hotel, the pool, and I like the transition over to the park. I honestly, I, I, I like uh, – it's it's a good good atmosphere, and it, it makes the uh, – you know, I, I actually never had made the player's party at the hotel, but I made everyone that's been at the field, and, and I really appreciate everything you put into that. And also anyone who uh, were to come out this year to the uh, to the opening ceremony and enjoy some free beers, they, they, they're they going to be able to see me win another uh, home run derby championship. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm calling that right now, Jeff. Unless, hey, <laughs> unless I'm in it, Joe, because the last time, year, the last time I was in the home run derby when you were in it, it didn't work out so well. But hey, I'm going to brag now while I've got the opportunity. <laughs> Joe, Joe you crazy. don't get – you don't get to use those senior bats like you were using in San Diego. Hey, I'll, I'll use whatever bat you got. I'm going to right field on every home run. I already got the plan. Hey, check this out. Before we go to the Players Party itinerary, Karina Martins, the one we just talked about, came down to Waxahachie, ended up going and, and getting married the week after. She goes, I can deliver babies at the World Series if needed. Midwife here. <laughs> <laughs> That's commitment. 
That's yeah. badass. She cheered like she does for her home team, The Connection. She cheered just like that for us, man. That's really cool. That's a fan of the sport and the camaraderie. So that's awesome. I appreciate her. I'll tell you what. Uh, let's go. Stu says, not if Trini wins. Not if Trini wins it. He's your kryptonite. <laughs> I'll make sure Trini's not in it this year. I'm going to stand right behind you and videotape you. That I might have you pitch to me, sauce. <laughs> I might have you pitch to me. Oh, Lord. Never know. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff, let's run down that players party itinerary. I think that uh, Joe, myself, I think we throw a pretty good players party. But, you know, if you've never been to Vegas or like the first time, you know, some of these guys are going to be uh, uh, heading up there. They may not know as much about the players party. Run down the players party for us. So so the player party, it's going to be in conjunction with the opening ceremony. So say like what we did is. Wrigley is the marquee field. That's where the championship games are and whatnot. Um, we're going to shut Wrigley down uh, around two o'clock on Friday to do the home run derby qualification. So that field will be bumbling with music and people trying to qualify to be the last two people standing. At around five o'clock, we'll start announcing that the uh, the opening ceremony is beginning. Um, we'll bring everybody so there will be no games being played. Everybody will come to Wrigley. Hopefully. If you're not playing that night afterward, you'll come back to the field. I really want guys to come back to the field. Um, we're going to open up the beer truck, all the beers you want, and we're going to start the opening ceremonies. Mike O'Neill is going to be our announcer like usual. And we're going to go right down the list of, you know, I think we start with the, um, well, obviously we do the presentation of colors. That'll be the Las Vegas uh, Metropolitan Police Department uh, color guard again. We won't have our Canadian brothers with us this year, but they'll be with us in spirit. Um, and then we go right into some of the awards, um, such as, you know, the player of the year, um, the OPOC winner, defensive player of the year. I'm not sure if you've got their pictures or anything yet or where that's going to fall no, in the program. Got that it's going to be, we're going to run those down here in just a second, brother. Okay. And, uh, so we'll, uh, if I'm going out of order here, so it's the, uh, and then the hall of fame inductions, which I know you've already covered those on the show, but remember this year we yeah. have to cover, we have uh, to cover, we got, we got extra stuff for you, Jeff. Okay, so, so we got to cover 2020 and 2021. Yeah, we got you. Well, I, I don't know for sure. We'll have to run run that down, but I will just say that with this uh, Hall of Fame uh, player party, that's what we're covering. Then I'll go down this list of Hall of Fame inductions, and then we'll see. I'm hoping we yeah. got a man. I, so I'm this is sure. all part. So Trini, this is all part of the player party. So I'm kind of lumping it all together, but all this stuff is going to happen during that two hour time frame. Copy that. All right. So let's see here. Okay, so hey, now that you're mentioning that, let's go to the Hall of Fame inductions. Now, I think this is a uh, really special, and uh, I'm, I mean, I see some names on here. You know, we we came uh, SA Law came to the uh, to the uh, World Series in 2013, and so you know we haven't been around as long. If we would have known about it, we would have you know we would have definitely been there. But uh, since then, and because of this podcast in particular, I'm able to. Uh, know people on a deeper level and when i see these names up here there's there's quite a few of them that stick out to me so i'm really excited to be able to cover these hall of fame inductions and uh jeff i think you do do you have the list of i'll tell you what we'll show them and then you can talk about them is that cool yeah all right let's do it joe here we go it's the hall of fame inductions for this year we have got mr tommy hayes Bring up Mr. Tommy Hayes. All right, Jeff. So Tommy was, uh, he's a guy that uh, quietly was uh, Mr. Alliance because the guy never missed a tournament for like 10 years. He was the quietest guy on the team. He was surrounded by these huge personalities like Nate Baez and George Reyes and Ryan Coe and Mike Snyder. And quietly, Tommy's over there manning third base and winning championships. He probably one of my favorite teammates to ever play with. Great roommate, never said a word. Um, great, great, oh, just good overall ball player. Um, and I think he's making a comeback this year. I saw him on the LAPD Blue roster. So that's interesting. All right. Yeah, man. Hey, this is awesome to be able to have you here. Uh, yeah, I could read out their names, but I don't know them all. I know yeah. quite a few of them, but I don't know them all. And so it's, uh, it's awesome. Well, congratulations, Tommy Hayes. Very, very, uh, very impressive, man. We got next, I know this name, in the next Hall of Fame inductee is Mr. George. Reyes. So George was a guy like, uh, I mean, obviously this guy's an ambassador for the sport, right? So probably the best 
overall hitter in maybe the history of police softball, as far as I can tell. I mean, Donnie Myers up there too, but uh, George had uh, probably more power than Donnie. Um, but precision wise, they're right there with each other, just being able to get big hits and put the ball where they want. Um, one thing I like about George was he was a home run hitter when he started the, uh, playing police softball and he went and joined like an E softball team, the lowest level where if he hit a home run, it was out. And the only reason he did that was to work on his swing. And n- I've never seen such a big man, such a power hitter, be able to keep the ball in so much. So when I think about the best East overall hitter and the best West overall hitter, if the game was on the line and you needed somebody to get on base, it would be a coin toss between him and Donnie. I'd take Donnie in the East and, and George in the West. Wow. Super impressive, man. Yeah. Joe, we got to see him down in uh, Texas when we played. You guys came down with the Missouri Lawman, and George was over there playing. Uh, who was it with uh, that he played with? I think it was uh, uh, Ron Peeler. Sweet Cal Combo. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, no, not Sweet Cal Peeler. Combo. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, Gosh darn it! Who was it, Joe? Remember, uh, George played with them. They won it. They won it that first. That was, year. That was Battleborn. Uh, Battleborn. Battleborn. Yep. Battleborn. There you go. He was with Battleborn, man. Soup. Right. Just like you said, Jeff. I, I'd seen him before, but I'd never seen him up close like that. And dude, everybody was. You know, it was late in the game. That team had just freaking. They looked like they were playing their first game and their last game. But that dude right there, man. It, I mean, it really was on cue. Need a home run, dude. Hit it. Need a base hit, he hit it. Man, super impressive. So congratulations, George. On top of that, very, very nice man. I love that dude uh, and his family uh, his family mentality. And uh, man, big man, but you know, you could see it in his eyes that he was, you know, he was, he was, uh, he was, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like us, like a big dude, but was able to be compassionate and caring and all like that. So it was pretty neat, man. So congratulations, George. Yeah, man, he was cool, man. <laughs> Hey, I'll tell you this. Check this one out. Joe, Anthony Costanzo says, I will pay for Trini to hit homers against Joe. (laughs) Everyone's rooting against me, man. Come on, Big Tone. (laughs) Mm -mm -mm. Everyone's going to – I want Trini to pitch to me. He can't – if he goes against me, I lose. It's automatic. (laughs) Hey, Dustin Laughlin, what's going on, brother? Thank you so much for your support again, man. He goes, from when we land in Vegas to when we leave the airport in Vegas – this tournament is 100% put together to make memories and compete with the top teams and players all over the nation. Can't wait. Yeah, well put. Uh, and then uh, Anthony says, can I get the free unsweetened iced tea truck? Oh, iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jason Brennan, what's going on, brother? He goes, I will be doing a concert as well. Timberlake, right? <laughs> I did a good time, too. And look at what Anthony says. George may be the nicest guy on the circuit. Yeah, man, he's a cool dude. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Now, this is special to me. A uh, lot uh, talked, had some good personal moments with this dude, you know, with uh, some of his losses and ultimately, uh, you know, his love for the game. And uh, this dude is, is not a policeman, but he might as well be. Uh, he is definitely one of us. And I talk about it's not the same if he's not there, Mr. Dan. Potter. So everyone knows Potter. So I met him just as an umpire. He came out and was umping cop tournaments in, I'll say 2006, somewhere around there, 2007. And Potter was Potter, you know, he's a nice guy and whatnot, but uh, um, getting to talk to the guy and stuff, it was clear that he was not just an umpire. He was a supporter of law enforcement first, right? So um, getting to know him and watching how competent and capable he was uh, as an umpire, we eventually pushed for him to be the crew chief. And uh, he's now the uh, UIC of, you know, all the Southern California, at least police softball. And, you know, if he could afford it, he'd probably run all the tournaments for you guys. But, you know, <laughs> he'd have to fly him out there and pay for his room. But whatever the case is, the umpiring is like a side note to what his contributions are. That guy is always doing raffles and fundraisers for fallen officers. And he does more for cops than cops do for cops. And he's the first civilian to be voted into the Hall of Fame. We've appointed uh, Brett Helmer in the past for all his contributions and the Wounded Warriors. But Potter's the first civilian to be voted in. And um, I think he was unanimous, um, which is saying how something about how well-respected he is, right? So. Absolutely, and he, and rightfully so. 
Um, like I've said, like I've told him before, and you know, he got a little emotional when I talked to him at my tournament because I've talked about it on this podcast. And you know, this is a live podcast. This isn't recorded. There's no editing to it. And uh, some people may lose sight of that. And you say something on here, and it's it. It's etched in. in <laughs> right. Yeah. And so for me uh, to be able to talk about Dan the way I do, and ultimately be able to tell him in person, I, I'm I sincerely mean it. If this dude was in the military like I was, he'd be my sergeant at arms. He'd be my enforcer. Uh, the guy is super passionate, but if he was a policeman, dude, I'd love to have him as, you know, a, a field training officer, you know, I mean, training coordinator. I mean, the dude would absolutely communicate. You do not screw around with this. This is my profession. I love it. And you're not going to come in here and screw with it. And that's, that's how I see him. And he, he demonstrated that without going into detail. He demonstrated that in San Diego. He took care of business with somebody. Oh, who we saw him. that. Yeah, yeah, we did. He took care of business. He, he felt bad afterwards. He apologized because he didn't want that to be a public display. No. But. You know, that that individual and everybody knew it there made himself bigger than the game. And mm -hmm. Dan just let him know that that's not what we do here. And I make sure, and, and Joe does the same thing, we make sure that umpires, they come out, they, they understand they're not bigger than the game. And Joe was my enforcer at my tournament with one individual <laughs> up that just, uh, he didn't get it. But towards the end, he did. I don't know. Maybe it was the free beer. But anyway, hey, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I think he ultimately, he uh, we should have gave him some the night before. But anyway, uh, all right. So congratulations, Dan. Very well deserved. Happy to have you, brother. All right. So we got the next inductee, Mr. Joe Markulik. Am I spelling it or am I saying it Markulik, right? Markulik, yeah. Mm -hmm. Markulik, there we go. All right, so this is an individual right here that I want to know some history on. Let's do it. So Joe's an East Coast guy, right? So, but I knew him more of he's on the Hounds now as a coach, but I knew him more as a player for uh, John Irvin with the Dirty Jersey Boys, and then later with the Shamrocks. Um, he's won other uh, season end awards for PS dot com. Um, one thing about Joe is that he can still hit the ball, so. Um, I'm a little concerned about him in the uh, coach's game hurting someone because uh, he's still a ball player. But, uh, you know, certainly deserving. He he's another guy that does more for the sport than he takes from it. I mean, he's a giver, not a taker. Um, just a tremendous asset to, to the hounds now. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him, at, like, finally get, like, some recognition because it, it seems like he is in the, um, kind of the shadows of some of the big personalities on the East Coast. So, um, I'm liking that he's getting to the Hall of Fame, and I'm liking that he's going to be playing in the uh, in the marquee game, and that's why he's in the starting lineup because we, we get to see him and celebrate Joe. Yeah, very cool, man. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm anxious to meet him and to be able to say what's up because uh, some of these guys, I don't get an opportunity to, like, I mean, I may see him play, but, if, man, look at this dude. Uh, let's bring him up again, Deanna. Some of these guys are in glasses and, and hats, and like that's the only way I'm going to recognize them. So I show up to the players' party, and I'm like, I don't know that dude. I mean, you know, I wouldn't know half of them if I didn't see him in their ball caps or, or glasses. So anyway, I'm excited to meet this man, and uh, congratulations, man, Joe Markulik. Thank you very much. Looks like Wax just posted that he's going to be the number three hitter for the East Coast team in that uh, marquee game. Nice, he did. Oh, and I heard he he likes to laser third base, and they got Potter playing third base for the West. Oh, so I hope Potter wears a uh, vest or something because I'm bring, I'm gonna bring him some shin guards. <laughs> I think he's got everything from the waist up, left or right of the waist, and then you know shins down or uh, waist down. I don't know, but well, I know man. Big Tone's on here, and I know they got him scheduled to play shortstop. So let's nice. hope he doesn't get on top of one of those one of those line drives. They're gonna go out and button hook down on top of them. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, congratulations again, Joe. Um, anxious to meet you. All right, so the next Hall of Fame inductee is Craig Poo Sears. Am I correct on saying it that way? So another. So once again, we're back to Jersey, right? And, and Joe's probably played against uh, like, Craig more than I did. I, like I did. Play, elite. Yeah, I did. So so I, you know, Shamrocks, Maximum Elite. You know, I've played against him many times, um, more for the Shamrocks, but. It was more toward the end of my career, but he's been around, you know, he's, uh, he's one of those, he's like a gamer. Um, he, like you don't want to cross him, Like, you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah. uh, you, you want to avoid hitting the middle against him if possible, yeah. because he, he's not a fan of the middle shots. He's yeah. intense. But I tell you, I, I tell you what, Joe, Joe will say this too. Like if you need a game one, you want him on the, on the bump because 
like he'll take a shot off the chest and come back and finish the game, you know, with a broken wrist or something. He's crazy right. like that when it comes to winning. He just he's got this winning attitude, um, and he, you know, he's 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 a gamer. I mean, he, he's he's like a rattlesnake on the field. You know, he'll bite you. So yeah, that's a well, great I, way to put it. He's definitely a gamer, and he's he's got a lot of intensity when he's when you're in the middle of a game with him for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I I don't. I don't remember any intensity on any of these dudes in the stands because they're so kind. All these dudes were yeah. super kind. They they got together as a team and they uh, they uh, contributed to Shields for Kids on that special year where we had uh, you know Iker, a little boy that we helped with Shields for Kids in the hospital, who was uh, you know going through his cancer treatments. And ultimately, when we had our tournament in Waxahachie, you know, and Maximum Elite was there. Um, you know, I got the notification the day before that we needed to pray for him because he was going to go be with the angels. And two days later, you know, uh, it got passed and we were able to give a check, um, uh, you know, to that family. And it was, it was due to the contributions of that tournament and maximum elite stepped up as a team. And, and that was really cool. Great. So, dude, so man. if I could compare him to somebody in the West coast, I would compare him to like a Keith Benjamin. Mm. Like he's the guy like on the field, you want him on your team. Um, you don't want to go against him. Yeah. But off the field, like nicest guy in the world, right? Yeah. And I think somebody might have commented on that, but whatever the case, that's the way he is. He's just a gamer. Like when yep. during that seven innings, right? It's time to play softball and win. Jonathan Robinson, meanest man on the field, nicest dude in the parking lot afterwards. That's cool, man. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, Jonathan, what's up, man? Hey, I need these hats. I'm gonna. I'm, that's what I was calling you about. So we're gonna make it happen. I'll talk to you later about it. But thank you for joining us, man. Anthony Costanzo says. Third base, JB. Bring it, Joe. <laughs> oh, he's calling for Joe. Yeah, he's bringing it from the cooler. <laughs> Mr. Terry Dugan, let me tell you what. That dude, I mean, always makes me feel very special. Whenever I have a request or something like that, I'm like, hey, dude, just help me out with this. I, I'll, it doesn't, I'm not asking for anything, whatever. He's like, Trini, don't worry about it. I'm there. I got you. Dude sent me a box for my tournament to be able to hand out to people for the raffle, for prizes. Thank you so much, Terry. Not only for what you do for our uh, circuit, but also your service to your country and to your community, man. You did, he did both. Special place in my heart. So thank you, Terry. And Terry says, Pooh and Masi R in Vegas now playing major plus senior ball. What's Ma what's Masi R? That's Dave Massey. And uh, R is short for A-R-E. Ah. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I do, I do know. learning things, man. I got, I I got Wax's lineup earlier, and I know uh, – Terry is playing center field and leading off for the East team. So oh, that's, that's he's gonna run around the outfield a little bit and shag some, run some balls down. So, dude, uh, I'm gonna smell Bengay all over that fucking park <laughs> on that night. I'm telling you right now. And people don't, some young kids don't know about Bengay because they got all these other like guns and all that. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. dude, I'm telling you, these dudes, they're still, they're keeping Bengay in business. That's all I know. These dudes are keeping Bengay in business. I want to get tell Terry and uh, Ralph they're gonna be playing uh, ball this weekend too. And I think it's 60, 60 plus. Uh, good luck out there this weekend. They were t I was texting back and forth with Terry about the uh, Louisville Slugger senior bat. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good bat. Jeff yeah. Jeff saw it out in uh, San Diego this year. So oh, no, that's a great bat. They're going to be swinging that out there. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Very cool. Good luck on that. Hey, congratulations, Craig Poo Sears. All right, going on to the next one. Hey, super excited about this dude, man. This guy has shown me nothing but love. It's a he's a not only a big man because I you know there's other dudes on Mark Jackson. These a lot of big dudes. Stu Donaldson, big dudes, big hearts. This dude's a big dude, but like ripped. Like Jeff, I'm telling you right now. Oh, by the way, man, where is he at? Let me see here. Let me show you this. Uh oh, check this out. What's Trini got going on here? This and it, it's it's the uh, the pumpkin man. He's got a pumpkin. <laughs> Trini and his pumpkin. This is appropriate for the next introduction of our Hall of Fame inductee. If you notice, Jeff, this oh, is the Waxahachie God. pumpkin. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's absolutely spelled the wrong way. <laughs> Look at this. I love Great Lakes. 
This one is our next Hall of Famer. I want to talk about Mr. John Jay Z Zintac. Get it, Jeff? I mean, obviously, yeah, you know plenty about John. So, John is probably my most trusted confidant or when I come to like bouncing off ideas about how to make the world series better. Um, just such a supporter. A lot of times he says, Jeff, just make a decision and stick with it. He goes, if you ask everyone their opinion, you're going to get a thousand different opinions and no one's going to be happy. So I, uh, like this guy I think so highly of when it comes to like the way he views the sport and, and we have these similar visions and whatnot. Like if I were to die tomorrow, like I would be comfortable with John Zintac taking over police softball.com in the world series. Um, so he's just, he's that good of a guy, that big of a vision. Um, I just, I, I think so highly of him, not a, as a person, but, but, but obviously, but from a softball point of view too, like we, he and I are in sync with the way we think about things, the way we would do things. So I just, and obviously on the field, the guy's phenomenal. Um, you know, he, he's on here because of his talent on the field, but, I'm talking about other stuff that didn't even con contribute to his voting into the Hall of Fame. So that's that's the kind of guy he is. Well, I'll tell you what. I love the dude. I love his uh, his play. Always a you know um, uh, an outstanding player. But like I said, man, when he he's got something because when he talks to me, when I call him, because I also call him for advice, you know, bounce things off of him, and then ultimately at my tournament we talk, and you know. I know he's just freaking about to lose it when he wants to critique something, but I appreciate that he's very nice about it. <laughs> you know, he does things for me that I think like Joe, my partner, I think they do things for me where they're like, you know, I don't know what it is, but they're really cool with me about like Trini. Hey, look, I, I know that you're doing this and I, and I like that you're doing it and I know why you're doing it, but maybe have you considered this, right? And they're just really good about the way they do it because I don't think these dudes do that normally. I think that they sometimes can be like, you know, very, very opinionated and very strong in their views. And I, I appreciate that they make that concession for me. So what, what, what was that? What was that? I just want to let you know that Jay-Z is my favorite. And even though I'm here with you right now, that's where my heart is. All right. Well, Trini, that's cool. you're, losing, hey. you're losing it, man. You're, <laughs> you're losing it. <laughs> hey, the wax at you, pumpkin. Joe, you're responsible for this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you did to him last year. I think that's an imposter. <laughs> no, he is the real deal. Well, congratulations, Jay-Z. Very happy that you were inducted. Now, the next one, I'm excited to be able to announce. This dude has uh, hosted, played, and, uh, you know, m participated a lot when it comes to the uh, communication and uh our message board and you know i know he helps a lot so when it comes to the circuit i'm happy to announce that this next hall of fame inductee mr jim smith so J jim's a guy that's really like in my opinion i mean you guys been around forever right but over the last like I don't know, I want to say like six, seven years that he's become a true leader of police softball. He's a leader of men. So, you know, he's a good softball player. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he's the, but but I, I look at Jim more as a leader of men, a guy that can organize a team like Thin Blue Line and take a team that no one even heard of before and tell me that I'm, we're going to be the majors and we're going to we're going to win a world championship. And to get everybody to buy in, I mean, he's a police chief at his agency. So he's truly one of those guys that contributes more to the game than he takes away. He runs a phenomenal tournament. He runs a, uh, an amazing team. Um, he always over delivers. So a lot of people over promise and under deliver. Jim's the opposite. Jim will, Hey, I'm running a little softball tournament. Come check it out. And he just over delivers on everything. Um, but so I, I look at Jim as a, the first thing that pops to mind is leader of men. And I, he certainly deserves to be in the hall of fame for sure. Awesome, man. Well, congratulations, Jim. Very nice. I'm excited to be able to see that dude this year. I will say Scott wax says he's back. He's talking about the wax at you pumpkin and ask, is he coming to Vegas? Hmm. I don't know if he'll make the, uh, 
I'm make the trip. <laughs> Carry on bag. You get a fit of the Southwest light of the, of the <laughs> fragile. I'm going to see what the wax at you pump. I'm going to see how long he lasts. Cause uh, I'm actually, I mean, we're really getting along well and I'm hoping that, you know, things will, things will last longer than they did last year. So, Hey, last one, but definitely not least hall of famer, Mick Ackerman. So, uh, so Mick, I did not play against him a ton. Um, I knew, so he's got, it's just thin blue line in New York Metro. So I knew him from New York Metro for years and years, but um, I did play against him for the first time ever in Palm Springs. The, the New York Metro came out in 2005 and played in Palm Springs. I think he was out there, but whatever the case was, um, I caught him more toward the tail end of his career. I will say this though. I've never seen anyone uh, garner so much support as to get into the Hall of Fame as Mick has. So he's been up a couple times and he didn't get in. And there's some dudes that were like dumbfounded, like, how did this guy not get in? Um, and I, I, I can't explain why I'm not on the East Coast Voting Committee, other than the fact there's so many other guys from New York Metro that got on there, the Donnie Myers, uh, you know, Flip McGovern, all these guys that, that like – I just think that he just got kind of lost in the shuffle a little bit with all these, you know, these bigger personalities, maybe the time, but I tell you what, man, that guy, he had people coming out of the woodwork, like text messaging me and emailing me and I'm not even on the committee. I'm like, I'll forward it to the committee. So that guy uh, probably like the godfather of like New York, like I wouldn't want, you know, like, I think the ma- if he didn't get in this year, there might be some mafia hits on people. I don't know. <laughs> the Irish mafia or something, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Joe, you know, I want to comment on that because uh, one of the things that I think people need to understand is, is that when it comes to the uh, Hall of Fame, you know, like committee, you know, the inductees, things of that sort, these people are volunteering their, not only their time, because it's not just, hey, let's just pick someone. I mean, they have to really go through emails and and make decisions there's there's people that are that are sent up that are very well deserving but you know you can only pick so many right and uh, that being said i want to give a shout out to those guys man that are making those decisions that are taking their time to be able to you know really think this through because none of us want to be able to deny anybody of anything like that because they're all deserving but we can only let so many in for so long, you know, so many times. And, and it's one of those things where, you know, Hey, maybe, maybe this will be next year. Let's see how this goes, but it's not a, a, a negative thing on anyone. It ultimately just is, you can only let so many people in. And, uh, I think it's very impressive Mick that you had that many people step up for you and, uh, and to be able to put those types. And, and Hey, Jeff, I know you'll agree with me. It doesn't happen unless people take action and send right, things in. Right. You you put things on the message board. It's there. You know. You really believe somebody should be there. The, the same people that probably wrote up for Mick this time could have done it before. Right. They just maybe didn't think about it. They didn't know. Maybe they don't check the message board. It's important to check that message board and to be able to understand uh, that these notice notifications are there. You got to be able to check right. that message board to be able to stay in tune with what's going on, right? Yeah. yeah, I put it back on these guys. Like, I'll get a snarky message saying, I can't believe John Doe's not in the Hall of Fame. Well, if you spent 30 seconds typing a snarky comment, why don't you spend five minutes typing up a, a submission <laughs> and submit him so he can be in for discussion? But I'm not going to just, you know, I don't, I don't, there's a lot of criteria. You got to be 45 years old. You know, you got to know, we need to have something. Joe, about how old are you? So, not 45, man. How old are you? 40, 43. I'll be 43 here in a couple of days. He looks yeah, like he qualifies, yeah. though. He looks like he qualifies, Trini. I'd say I'd vote him in now based on looks. Listen, I feel listen. like I'm about 55. <laughs> you got a couple of years, buddy. So, all right. That's good, though, man. I'll tell you what. That's that's awesome. I'm happy to be able to have you in there, uh, Mick. Obviously, you were very well deserving, and uh, ultimately it happened. So, that's badass. All right. So, that rounds up our Hall of Fame inductions. Um, Jeff? I know we had the previous years. I know. Yeah, I don't. I, I didn't. Um, I don't know if I sent that over to you guys, but we're we're going to do 2020s also, and I think you guys covered that on a previous podcast. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. so, so that's, we're going to get recognized on the field. Big yeah. I will right. just say that 
it's a weird year, man. Even for my team, it was like a weird year. Like we had messages on our team on our little group thing that we have where it's like, you know, Hey man, this is weird. Where are we at? Whatever you know, COVID really messed a lot of things up, you know, to include being like me being, uh, sick with it. Uh, you know, Hey man, I'm checked out for two or three weeks and that, that, you know, that puts a dent in things. So anyway, it's going to be, uh, I'm rusty too. Like I, got, I forgot to do the team MVPs this year. Yeah. You know, because every year we bring the team. Maybe I forgot to do it. And it's too late now. The itinerary is already set. So you it's know like, what, sorry, though, guys. I'll tell you what. What's really cool is that nobody, nobody will sit there and crit critique that when you look at everything that takes place when you go to the uh, World Series games. Right. Nobody will critique anything, man. They when you, If you do, you try putting something on like this. All right. Like, yeah, yeah. Come, try, yeah. Yeah, come, see how come, that come handle it for me next yeah, time. Hey, I'll take delegate it. it to him. Exactly. All right. So we got season oh, end award winners fun so stuff yes good stuff here manager of the year all right so we're talking about ralph randy sampson from the maryland outlaws so yeah this guy his team loves him he he got the best right up he's always out there in vegas and the big thing about him is if you look at maryland team man they, they like they've been in like gold for years and then but now they're talking about being like, uh, like they want majors. Like the attitude of that team is completely different, and it, it's because of Randy. And, and like one thing I didn't realize is how much he pushes the spirit of police softball. In in the players on his team talked about it's not just about winning games, also the spirit of the game and whatnot. So his team loves him. He's taken a team from you know a, a pretty good gold team, I guess, to like man a contender. And, uh, you know, hats off to him. I, 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 you know, I'm looking forward to seeing them. We'll see what the Swami ball says about it, but uh -huh. I'm looking forward to seeing how they do it how they do next weekend. They're for yeah. sure a contender, Jeff. Those guys, we played them uh, a couple times over the last few years, and they they got a good squad, both sides, defensively and offensively. Right. Big shout out to Seven Man Productions, Joel and Crystal here. What's up, Trini? Hey, guys. I am trying to get these dudes to see the value of what it is I'm doing with my personal brand, Keepers of the Peace. And ultimately, Jeff, same way I got that videographer to come out there and to be able to create good cop, bad cop, I want to get Joel to go out there because, Joel, check out you know the Trini Trinidad uh, channel. Look at the, the, the lead video. That video was produced at the World Series. You come out here, you're going to be able to create something really special just like that. You know, see the value in it. Come out, help us out, promote the uh, World Series, and also uh, promote who it is we are we are, and what we do. All right, cool. All right, so let's go to the sponsor of the year. We all know that. If you have anything to do with our circuit, Jeff, I think you'll agree that uh, the sponsor of the year, Mr. Paul Chavez, is very well deserving. Uh, yeah, so Paul's a guy, he's an interesting one because he's got, um, he's not law enforcement. That guy, he was friends with Dell and heard about the circuit, wanted to contribute because he loves law enforcement and just became, came out to the tournament, the World Series, and became so attached to it that now he's like, so for example, this year, the winning teams in majors, mid majors, and gold get custom uh, blue line watches from Rockwell, courtesy of Paul. He's given away custom painted handguns before. He asked for nothing back. He just wants to show his support for law enforcement and be, you know, kind of like an extended brother in the brotherhood. Um, so he was, yeah, for sure, sponsor of the years. For the last four or five years, he's been involved, really uh, like intensively involved in our sport, and he deserves it. Sponsors many teams, players, et cetera. Deanna, let's get a picture of Paul O. Chavez truck. That dude is freaking, you know, I don't know. I, I think he could probably run for president and win. I mean, the dude is super patriotic, believes in the safety and security of our country. And, uh, man, when you see his truck and you see what he does with those trucks, I um, mean, you, if you saw that thing rolling down the highway, you'd freak the hell out. So <laughs> congratulations, Paul. Let's see here. All right. So now we got the defensive player of the year. I want to make sure I pronounce this right. Jeff, you're going to help me out with this. John Thibodeau from Great Lakes. Just call him JT. That's what JT. I think it's Tabato. I think it's Tabato, but I'm not sure. Tabato. Some say Tabato. Okay, Tabato. Some say. Hey, Tabato, Tabato. Tomato. Yeah. Come on. 
Okay, so my, my big thing with this with this guy is is if you so I you know I watch all the games right. So every year Great Lakes comes in, one of the top teams, great pitching, great hitting, and the knock on them was they were giving away runs due to some shoddy defense, particularly in the infield. All of a sudden, this guy shows up, and now they're winning every tournament, right? So, boom! I mean, it's, obviously, he's the you know he's the anchor of that of that infield, that defense, and um, just it's it, to have a guy like that that can play, you know, middle infield or whatnot and just lock it down when you've already got a guy who's a lights out pitcher and you know, you've already got the offense automatic contender. So this guy's like, like uh, I was talking to Zintac about him. He says like, I'll take that guy any day of the week as my number one pick if I'm building a defense. So I'm looking Jay-Z, forward to seeing what he does in Vegas. Jay-Z said the same thing to me and walks at you. He's like, this dude is the best shortstop in the circuit. That's what he told me. And you know, you already you already told me about your respect for Jay Z and what he guides you on. If yeah, this yeah. dude to- tells you this dude, I would put him up against any shortstop. I mean, you know, that's that's pretty impressive. Now I will tell you this: I got some pretty good shortstops, middle infielders, second basemen's pretty good, uh, and and defense really makes a difference, man. You want to talk about at the point where you get to the majors? If players on the opposite team realize they cannot go to their strength, which most most are uh, you know uh, uh, matters that are going to pull it. If they realize that that shortstop or middle guy are shutting it down, man, that really messes up a team. I mean, that really can make them switch things up. And uh, so that's the importance of guys like John now Tabato uh, from Great Lakes. And Great Lakes, man, I tell you what, I. That, that's one of those teams like the connection, you know, I mean that it's like when I go to the World Series, I want to show up to see those dudes play. It's like entertainment for me. You know, I'm not scouting them. I, I forget to see how they bat and where they play and all that. It's like I'm just there for the entertainment. Mm. And that's a big compliment to be able to have that. Let's see the Chevy Wright Sportsman of the Year. Uh, this one, this one connects with me in my heart. So we got Neil Piccolo, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, Neil Piccolo from Maximum Elite. Hey, that <laughs> right there is in line with what I was talking about with Maximum Elite. Great guys. So Neil's so big that both of his arms wouldn't fit in this picture, obviously. <laughs> so he, he, he's a thick man. So I didn't. Uh, so this is when I saw. I I don't. I didn't know all this about Neil. So his submission was uh, uh, entered by uh, John Irvin. And I think John's on the podcast here watching, but this guy raised a million bucks, you know, in, if for uh, fallen officers and whatnot, a million dollars, this guy, I had no idea what his contributions were off the field. This is almost like, so this, the Chevy Wright uh, award this year kind of crosses over into that OPOC award also. Um, but Neil is also, I mean, just from a softball point of view, he's a gamer, right? So that's why maybe more toward the softball, he was, you know, he's been sponsoring teams, leading that Shamrock team. Now it's Maximum Elite. He's doing all that on the field, and then off the field, he's raising a million bucks in these fundraisers and stuff. It's absolutely incredible what this man does, and I didn't, I didn't know any of it until I read about it. So, thanks, John, for sharing it with me. And obviously, he was like, once I saw his submissions, like, you know, you know, without a doubt, he's our Chevy Wright Sportsman of the Year. Congratulations, Neil. Yeah. No, that's even awesome, with man. all that stuff he does off the field, he still has time five hours a day to get in the gym, which is amazing to me. <laughs> that guy is right, right. That guy is friggin' huge. Well, I'll tell you what, this is gonna be interesting because um I'm not gonna I'm gonna wait till we get done with these announcements to be able to comment on what I'm gonna about to comment on. So Chevy Wright Sportsman of the Year, Neil Piccolo. Congratulations, man. It's cool to hear. Can't wait to be able to shake your hand, man. I want to be able to, you know, hopefully you don't hurt my hand because I'm going <laughs> to wait till after, you know, after I play. But, uh, hey, man, congratulations on that. Now we're getting to the OPOC Award winner. And that's the Outstanding Police Officer of the Community Award winner. This guy right here, I personally know what he's done. And I want to be able to, uh, you know, put a little emphasis on this one because, like I said before, you know, when we talk about the 
Outstanding Police Officer of the Community Award winner. I mean, it's special to me because I've won that. And that's Mr. Dan McIntyre. You waiting on me, Trini? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're the one that wrote this up, so I'm going to let you handle Dan. So all I can tell you about Dan is, is like, this is a guy that flew out to Dale's funeral, um, you know, for one day to attend Dale's funeral. That's how much police softball means to this guy. And and if it weren't for you, I mean, I, I do, I follow him on Facebook, so I know he's doing a lot of this stuff. But to have it all written down and uh, synopsized the way you did it, Trini, just it's so impressive what this guy's doing. Um, and the, the, so I'll go off a little bit here. You know, there's talk, you've heard the story, the dash in between on your headstone, you're going to have a birth date and a death date. And you're going to have a dash in between and the numbers don't matter. All that matters is what you do with your dash. This guy's making a significant impact with his dash. And that's why uh, Von Garrett from Garrett metal detectors hand selected him to be the outstanding police officer of the community as uh, as sponsored by Garrett metal detectors. Trini, you can handle the rest because you wrote it up. So. so check this out. This is what's going to be cool is that Dan is, and I see the comments that are coming up. If everybody will pay attention to the comments that are coming up right now, but do not take away from the outstanding police officer of the community award winner. Dan McIntyre is badass. This dude does so much off the field and he participates so much in, in helping people that are in need, and especially the kids in the community that are involved in Special Olympics. So I personally wrote this letter up because I wanted to be able to, you know, recognize things that are important to me. And that is, I'm not the best player in the circuit. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm past my prime. But <laughs> I, I was so happy to be able to be inducted into the PoliceSoftball.com Hall of Fame based off of what I do besides just playing the game. And that's why this award is so important to me. And that's why I, I value, you know, Dan McIntyre and what he does off the field. So that's cool. No, Deanna, I got it. I got it. So Jeff, Joe, I'm here to share something with you. Trying to in catch up business. with the comments. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to follow the comments on my oh, phone. No, no, I got you. Yeah. I got you. Check yeah. this out. So Alamo yeah. biohazard, right? Okay. You know, the business that I'm in, right? Oh yeah. Unfortunately, in the industry of the crime and trauma scene cleaning industry, one thing I've always learned, one thing I've, I was always told was that you'll know when you're making a difference when people come after you. And unfortunately, we've been sabotaged tonight. Oh. Unfortunately, there's a company called Alamo, well, Alamo Biohazard. I invite all of you on YouTube to go check out Alamo Biohazard. So, Deanna, if you don't mind, send me a message on their name outside of this one because... Alamo um, Biohazard. Yeah. So, here's what I will say. People, it's unfortunate, but we are right now being targeted for who it is that we are as law enforcement officers. What a wonderful thing for you, Fabian, and your wife to utilize this forum to be able to think that you're going to affect who it is I am, who my family is, and who we stand for in this industry. You will not take away from what I've done for my country and what I've done for my community. You've learned how to socially attack who I am, my integrity. And if, if there's one thing I'll tell you. Just so you know, I'm looking at you right now. There's nothing that I'm going to do when it comes to this broadcast with anything else on this platform. I want to talk to you. I want you to know something. You cannot shake or get me to fear the comments that you are creating on my platform with my community. I've dealt with this my entire career. I can't see the comments. There are. Oh, let, let me explain this to you. So Jimmy Marine getting any returned overtime that was never paid to him. Jimmy Marine was my first supervisor I've ever had in my lifetime. We are very close. And this person is using this other person's um, situation to try to use against me. Jimmy Marine will back me in a heartbeat. What about the working conditions? I challenge you 
to come to my office and talk to me about those working conditions. Here you are. It's documented. Let's do this. Come on over and let's have a civil conversation about what we're talking about. In fact, I invite you to call me right now, 210-669-0599. That's my personal number. Go ahead and call. Let's talk about it. I'm good with it. Are you sure you want to bring that up? Because you know what you're going through. OSHA violations. When will we receive the list of previous employees that were there for the past two years? I have no issues with any of that stuff. My reputation will not be faltered by somebody like you. It's an open invitation. No one's coming after you. You've already came after everyone else and took whatever oh. they're working for and put right into your pocket. So why would, wouldn't anybody come after you? You know what? This is the kind of thing, Jeff, that, I, that we talk about. This is an, a great example of these people. Everybody look up America's bio, bio solutions on YouTube. I, I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to run your business, but we're talking softball here. Block those guys out and let's get back to talking softball because don't let them ruin what we got going right now. I think no, you're giving I, what, too much credit because my no, wife's no. looking them up now. Now they're going to get some kind of like, no, 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 I wouldn't no, even look no. them up. I wouldn't you even know, acknowledge them. <laughs> you know what the difference is? The difference is, is that I want to make sure that it is acknowledged. Cause I'm different. See, I, I'm different when it comes to when somebody's going to abuse what it is that we stand for and what we do. This is a, an exact, um, example that will be documented that ultimately will work against them. So it's like spam. Hear, uh, but, back to and it is, and it is, and it is. Yeah. They don't but, deserve the time training. They don't. Yeah. Let's get back to softball. This is like, we get spammed by Russians or something. I, that's the way I look at it. So, um, I will put this, <laughs> look them up, do what you got to do. It's going to be interesting how this works out. All right. So uh -huh. thank you that for that, Terry. D Ward says block that fool. Yeah, I got it. Man, it's the first time that's ever happened to me. It's crazy. So it's, it's, uh, it's difficult because the thing that I want to be able to say is that this is an example, though, of what we deal with when we're on our, you know, doing what we do for our community. And it uh, even even goes this far to be able to interrupt something like this. So blocked them, got it. Yeah. But I need to make it known so that that way you understand it's the first time I've ever had this happen to me. But it it is important to be able to understand that although I do this for our softball community and I do this for the love of what we do. I still do not let that stop me. And ultimately, ultimately, we will prevail. And it's, but it is difficult to put this thing on when you have people like that coming on. Yeah, the more you give them credit, though, the more they are, they're winning. So I wouldn't even acknowledge the guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, one more time yeah. Texas Bio Solutions, just so you know, that's where it's at. So they've got somebody working for them. It is what it is. Well, the reason I say that, Jeff, is because I can't continue to do this without people understanding how we, how we care so much about what it is that we do with this podcast or the tournaments or anything else, because it's an example of what we do on the streets when we try to just provide for our community. That's all. It's, a, all right. it's, it's deep for me. So They're done. All right, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's go with the player of the year. Dustin Laughlin from The Connection. He was on here earlier. He made a nice comment earlier about how much the circuit means to him. So this, so when people ask, like, why do I do this? Because I don't play anymore, right? It's for guys like this. This guy appreciates the brotherhood, the everything about police software. I'm not even talking about the guy as a player right now, but everything I read about this guy, all his comments and stuff, he gets the big picture. That's why old guys like me and you, Trini, now that you're, you're past your prime and although Joe's still in his prime, he looks like he's past his prime. That's why we do this is for guys like Dustin, who's, you know, a young kid who's, you know, player of the year. You're talking about a guy, I mean, to be the best guy on the best team in the nation right now is really saying something, but to also have him be so humble and to be, I mean, when he won the player of the year award, I saw it on Facebook, he made this comment how, how uh, you know, 
he is not like the uh, prima donna superstar. He's the opposite. He's he's like they call him the spark plug of the team. He's the guy you build your team around. Guys like this, and I, I hope Dustin's listening right now. Congratulations on your award, and I look forward to seeing you out there. And I want to see uh, I want to see you standing standing tall and playing well on uh, Sun uh, Saturday night. Yep. Oh man, I'll tell you what. Uh, that dude has been a supporter and gets a lot of love from a lot of people. So. I'm happy to have you, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Next one is the Dale Pickney Award. Now, you're going to announce this at the World Series? So this is not my award. Tone's on here, I think, right now. So we're not giving any names. Tone and Dennis Leonard decided uh, several years ago after Dale passed to have a Dale Pickney Award. It's their award. I love it. Um, it's announced on the field. It's a big surprise. It's different than every other award. But it is it is for the person who's most symbolic of what Dell represented to the sport. And we'll find out about that on uh, Friday night during the opening ceremony. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Tone. I think he's on here. Tone. Yep. I'm excited yep. about that one. Yep. So let's go with the Home Run Derby. Jeff, tell us about the Home Run Derby. So it's a Home Run Derby. This is interesting. So Swami will, Swami will hit on this a little bit later. And Joe, I'm sorry. I saw the results. Your name wasn't in the final cut. But whatever the case – um, I was looking at the results of the Home Run Derby. So to begin with, the Home Run Derby is the Dr. Charles Garrett Memorial Home Run Derby. Um, it's part of the opening ceremony. They sponsor it. But also Bud's Gun Shop is giving an AR-15 patrol rifle to the winner of the Home Run Derby. Our Home Run Derby is the most intense home. I think is the most intense Home Run Derby in sports. You, you know, your first round, you get uh, you get five swings to hit home run. And you stay right there. Then you get three swings to hit a home run and you stay right there. And then you get one swing to hit a home run and you stay right there. You go right through your rounds and all the guys who get down to that one home run round have a face off and they get two pitches in one swing. And I tell you what, you're talking about stress on the pitcher. You better have a good pitcher. You better have a good pitcher because you get you get when it gets down to the one pitch round to, to win this home run derby. Now, ultimately, there's going to be two finalists they get to come out during the opening ceremony and hit it off in this, in this final. And it's a timed event, much like major league baseball. They're going to be on the clock, hit as many home runs as they want, put on a display for the fans. But to be one of those two final guys and a chance for an AR 15 rifle and a chance to hit in front of a thousand, 1200 cops and just an intense environment. It's like, I just can't imagine how awesome that must feel. Like you try to see Trini smiling, like imagine yeah. you're the man oh, with the bat. Dude, I'm telling you. The music's blaring. O'Neal's oh, back yeah. there spinning well, his. All your peers are watching. Everybody all who loves the sport, watching. everybody who understands what it takes to be able to hit those home runs during those few pitches, and you're you're dependent on your pitcher. I mean, it, you know, it's like like this is it. Like, what right. home run derby do you want to win besides this one? Right. And and it. So check this out, guys. Of all the cops that hit in this thing, hundred guys hit in every year. We've had three guys win it twice. So uh, we had um, uh, from uh, Ohio, Dusty Bowling has won it twice. Oh, yeah. He's from the DEA year. combo, Lou Velasquez has won it twice. Mm -hmm. And from Mid-Atlantic, uh, Corey Rogerson's won it twice. Corey's our defending champion. And so to be – I mean, I just can't imagine even getting even close to the finals. And these guys have won it twice. What's interesting is there's no Corey this year. That means there will be a new king. And if you guys seen, we have a crown, the whole bit. You know, yeah. it's a big deal to win this thing. So yeah. it's going to be fun. Swami, yeah. Swami Ball will do some predictions later on that. Well, there we go. I need, I need to find out, Jeff, who was pitching to these guys. <laughs> yeah, who <laughs> was pitching key. to Corey? Who it doesn't matter. I'm pitching to you. Yeah. That's what pitching, I mean. Pitching is the key. I'm telling you, there's so much Everybody stress on the pitcher. That. One year, the pitcher, we had even the pitcher got an award. The pitcher got a screen. Um, Tim Grunman from uh, Jacksonville was selling pitching screens, custom pitching screens, really nice ones. And the pitcher got a screen and the batter got whatever he got. But I mean, now it's, we're talking about AR 15 rifles. Next thing you know, we're going to be giving out like, you know, Humvees or something. I don't know, but it's a big deal. <laughs> so, Well, that's yeah. really cool. And, and I'll tell you um, when it comes to the home run derby, it's like a lot of people want to be there to be able to see that because it's like, I mean, that's a long ball. Everybody wants it's a long ball. You know? yeah. And so, like me, I don't hit the long ball, but I hit it long enough to be able to beat Joe in San Diego. Uh. <laughs> but 
people don't hit the long ball as often. And when you see these dudes, it's like, man, you can hear it in the crowd. They're like, oh, oh, man. Then they hit it over the net. I mean, it's just really neat thing to see, you know. So that's a definite highlight, you know, when it comes to the home run derby. Hey, so, Trini, just for the record, it wasn't yeah. San Diego. It was Reno. Um, Reno, my bad. I don't know which one it was that I... I was having a bad day. Did that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Let's go to... Uh, hey, so here's what I love. I'm going to interrupt real quickly for just that subscriber thing. And this is the importance of what I'm talking about. So we had this company, right? They came on. They did what they did. Help me. Help me to be able to get that message out. Help me to be able to make them be less of a noise when it comes to our community. And... Man, like Joe said, you know, I promise you I will deliver content that is um, positive and beneficial for people through my um, experiences, through cancer, through business, and through service. And business, here's where I'm coming from. Jeff's in a personal training business. I don't know how many people will come after him because of personal training, but in the end, I want to be able to share with you these experiences of people who come after you and how do you handle that? Because I want to handle this. It's going to be good. But I think it's, that's why, Jeff, I, I highlight it. It's not so much that I need to block them so quickly. I need people to understand that this is a part of the struggle. When you go into business, you're going to go through struggles. And you will realize that when you're making noise, when you're making, when you're making some ground, people are going to come after you. And that's what happened tonight. But it's okay because my, um, you know, my character, my integrity, it's intact in this environment. That was the wrong environment for them to come to. They could have come in any other environment, but not this environment. And so do me a favor, subscribe to my tran channel, Trini Trinidad, go there, get me a thousand subscribers. Ultimately, I'm gonna get 4,000 watch hours, and then I'll bury these people because they will, they will not be able to overcome what I am truly, and that is, truly caring about all the years of my military service and police service and ultimately through my business through the biotechs they will not be able to handle the true genuine feeling of why i'm in this business and ultimately that comes through with the testimonials and the things that i'm going to put out but i have to be able to advertise that and through YouTube, you have to have to you have to break that threshold of a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours. So help me out with that. I appreciate that. All right. So let's go to the manager's marquee exhibition game. What's that about, Jeff? OK, so, you know, every year we have, the, you know, an all star game or some kind of marquee game. We didn't do one the last couple of years. Um, we got a little more time built into it this year because we canceled the. Or we moved masters to San Diego. So we brought it back and we wanted to give uh, a chance for us to, to show support for those who do all the stuff behind the scenes. There's so many like Terry Dugans of the world, right? So wouldn't it be great instead of, you know, seeing Terry in the dugout, you know, making things right for his guys. Hey, how about this time? How about this time Terry gets to play and his team comes and supports him. So that's the whole thought process behind the manager's game. Um, the starting lineups, we kind of chose those off the guys that are the non-playing managers. I know some of the managers signed up like Witt and uh, maybe Scott Block. Those guys still play for their teams. Um, Scott Block's like built like Hercules. I don't want to hurt anybody out there. So we made those guys umpires. But it, 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 ultimately, it's a chance for um, the, the managers and the people that give back to the sport. Carlos Vega from Elite, um, Dan Potter. And for us to go cheer those guys on for a change. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Swami Ball is going to make a, a prediction on that game too later. So. Okay. All right. So let's do the wristband ID checks director booth information. Okay. So um, this is very important for everybody. Like it used to be, hey, roll over here, get your wristband whenever you want. Not so anymore. You're going to get your wristband Thursday or Friday between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. period. So you cannot play in a playoff game until you get your wristband. Make sure you bring your identification card. Make sure that identification card matches whatever your coach submitted on your roster. I'm still waiting on a couple of rosters. So those two things, all that has to match up. You get your wristband. You wear it. You wear it the whole weekend. I can't tell you how many guys have come back. Hey, I was at the club last night and it fell off. They don't fall off, right? They cost us a lot of money. So – if you if you if you choose to remove your wristband, we'll sell you another one for ten bucks. 
the next one's going to cost you 20 bucks, right? Because we just can't, we, we're not in the business of giving things away. You're wearing the wristband all weekend, right? Not a big deal. So, but you have to get your wristband on Thursday or Friday between those hours and you cannot play in the playoffs until you get it. Make sure you bring your police identification card. Provided bat information. What's that about? Okay. So we got good stuff going on. So, so this is, I don't know if you guys, you guys probably know this. I know Joe does. He's caught up in all this. So Easton apparently owns just about everybody now, right? So I, I, Brett Helmer's been our sponsor. He's been an Easton guy. We've always been loyal to Easton. People always want to bring other bats in. We say we're not going to bring in competitors to Easton. Well, apparently Easton bought the competitors. So now Easton, Worth, and Mike and are all one big company. Brett's still the man. So I have not seen the bats yet. They're supposed to come this week. But Brett is sending us a variety of Easton, Worth, and Mike and bats to be used on the fields also, Carlos Vega, and I had a picture of it. I should have sent it to you guys. Those. Has created an El Presidente mm. bat. Uh, it's like oh, a nice. gunmetal gray looking one. They'll be on the fields. And then Chad Augustine from, I call him Chad Augustine, is August, Augustine That's from Honolulu slash, I don't know where he, Kansas slash Las Vegas. From everywhere. Slash, he plays from everywhere. everywhere. He's got uh, some uh, some blue line bats, uh, some long first responder bats that he's going to be sending to. So bats, everybody asks about the bats. They're covered this year with a variety of options. I just have not seen what Helmer's sending yet. No matter how you slice it, this is the uh, premier tournament to be able to you know show these bats. And so those are going to be some great bats. Right. Uh, we're talking about prize packages for the winning teams. So just without getting into details, just ex expect a lot. So we got stuff ranging from a bat. So the winning teams of the big ones are going to be majors, mid majors and gold. Some, some kind of bat package from whatever Helmer sends us to give out, you know, uh, roller bags, some kind of a combination of backpacks, roller bags, batting gloves. We already talked about the custom Rockwell watches from blue line. Um, the defensive MVPs in majors and gold are getting custom fielding gloves from uh, Dan McIntyre and his company. Carlos from Elite gives script for uniforms and whatnot, so you can buy new uniforms. And by the way, so this is the time of the year. We call it the silly season. So everybody who's, like, trying to, like, uh, recruit for next year, it's happening right now. So behind the scenes, there's all kinds of thousands of little text messages going around, like, hey, come play for a Team X next year and leave Team Y. So if your team wins, you're going to need that script from Elite to buy all these new uniforms for all the new players you're trying to recruit. It happens every year. So anyway, long story short, is ton of prizes. Um, I could go on and on. Um, just good stuff. Uh oh. Oh goddamn! That thought that was the uh, tater tot talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds like it. Tater talk is what I thought it was. All right. So uh, obviously we're seeing it because you can't you can't hide it. Here we go. Look. Wyoming Bio Solutions. They're doing it again. Guys. So what? So what they have is the same company that's taking advantage of this opportunity to be able to come up with different names uh -huh. to be able to hurt my company. So, so Jeff, here's my point. You can say block them, but block they have somebody too. working. Well, <laughs> I understand that, but they we block them. But there's a there's a part of me that is like I don't like to block people. Hey, come on. Let's do this. I don't well, have a problem. Closer. I will. Jeff, they get Jeff, closer to a thousand I have followers. A <laughs> I don't have a problem with this type of tactic because anybody within our career field or anybody that sees this understands what's happening here. You know what I mean? And so let them go. It's cool. It's somebody they've hired that's working for them that's doing this. So let them do what they do. It's okay. Let's move Let's give them a hundred more guys and then you got your thousand. We're good. Yeah, that's good. All right, so let's go with the, uh, let's see, quick overview of the gold, mid-majors, and majors division. I'll make it quick because I know I, most people are probably wanting to wait for the Swami Bowl. So let's just talk about this real quick. Gold, right. biggest division. So let's be 40 teams, 42 teams. We're down to, down, to, down to 38 teams. We lost a couple. We're supposed to be at 40, down to 38. Biggest division. Here's the big thing with the gold is – some of the teams that have won gold before got bumped up to, to mid-majors. Now they're back in gold again. So that's a problem for the teams. Like if, if these teams thought, hey, I got third in gold last year, well, guess what? You got guys coming down now that are going to give you a hard time. So gold is going to be tough. So gold is two round robin games, double elimination playoffs, first 16 teams eliminated, single elimination silver. So gold, biggest division, 
Um, and they're going to be playing on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this year. Mid majors, mid majors, and majors. I, I people always say we're mids, we're mid. I consider that all one big big division. The top thirty two teams in the nation are either majors or mid majors. Here's my point. I want to drill home, Trini. It used to be teams would say, "Well, we're a majors team." Or we're you don't get to pick anymore. From now on, you got to earn it. So I'm making a big deal out of teams earning the right to call themselves a majors team. This year, we believe there are 12 teams that earn the right to call themselves a majors team based on the body of their work and everything they've done this year. The remaining 20 teams, they've got to earn that in the tournament. So there's going to be four at-large berths. All 20 of those teams are going to fight it out. The, the Of those it doesn't matter what the top 12 do in the round robin. They're guaranteed majors. But of the other 20 teams that are in uppers, four of those will earn the right to call themselves a majors team and to compete in the majors World Series. And it'll be based on their round robin results. So, And then obviously mid-majors is going to have, you know, the 16 teams and majors will have 16. So if you don't make the top four, you drop down to mid-majors. And maybe next year you can earn your way up into majors. But the big thing is I'm trying to trying to um, stress is uh, we want teams to strive to make it to become a majors team. Awesome. And that's what it should be about. You should be able to want to go there and to be able to, you know, want to be able to achieve something more than what it is that your team's at. Because don't you want to win the majors? You want to win the majors. I mean, we, we won the gold. We get, didn't get an opportunity to win the uh, mid-majors. You know, we got bumped up. Cool. Go to majors. Let's see what we do. And in the end, it's about making your team better, ultimately, when it comes to the competitiveness. But at the same time, you know, the most important thing is the camaraderie. Like, we, let's come together and see what we got. You know, you always want to test yourself. So that being said, I, I love the uh, format, and that's why I follow the PS.com format because it's tried and true. It's tested. You know, I can I can create variations of it, but in the end, I don't want to stray too far from it because you've already gone through everything. You know, you guys have already tested everything. You had the questions, you've had all the critiques, and then you've settled on a, a certain area, and that is what allowed allows us to be able to, you know. Um, base the like the foundation of our tournament so i like it uh let's go with the swami can we go with the swami predictions let's bring that i, got, I gotta break out the props first right so let's what do we have here up. let's do it they made a beer for the swami <laughs> can we bring up so we've had swami it's, predictions in the past <laughs> Oh God! It's like the, <laughs> a heavy IPA brew with goat's milk. <laughs> it's heavy, man. I have one of these things like a milkshake. It's, it's strong. It's brewed out of San Diego, so it's called the Swami, and it's got it's actually got a Swami. I don't know if you see him. He's on there somewhere doing something, but yeah, there he is. Well, well, <laughs> I don't know. Do yeah. So we got I'll that the Swami picture for us. There we go. We got this. Let's do it. Bring it up. There we got uh, this. The current swami yes. prediction photos let's do it the crystal ball so here we are hey. there he is oh there he is a bit of a difference in the swami picture yeah. this year so let's see what happens oh that's right uh swami's gonna talk about that too <laughs> okay so, so here we go right, let's start it. with friday night so swami's got some notes here he ran ran everything through the, the crystal ball earlier right so i'm not gonna do it live here because i've already got notes here so in the home run derby, the Swami calls for someone who's good at hitting bad pitches. So the question is, <laughs> who can hit one off the shoestrings or whatever and still get one out, right? Who can go to all fields? There's one guy from the LAPD Blue. I've never seen anything like this. His name is Adam Nikolic. I've seen this guy hit the worst. He's like Vladimir Guerrero. He, the ball would bounce on the ground. He still hit a home run, right? But the Swami ball did not predict him to win it. It predicted another two-time winner. For the first time ever, Dave Massey will repeat and become a two-time winner. Why Massey? The Swami ball says Massey can hit it out to all fields. If that wind is howling in on Wrigley, Massey will go to right. And he can pull it. So we're going to the veteran, the hounds, Dave Massey. Swami Ball predicts him to win an AR-15 rifle. Joe, sorry. 
<laughs> I mean, I, th- I mean, those, the, both those guys can uh, hit the crap out of the ball. So I mean, I, there, there's so many, there's there's so many good hitters out there. You never know who's going to come out on top. But uh, like you said earlier, man, it's it's going to come down to who's pitching. I think that's going to be a big factor, and uh, and ho- hopefully whoever's pitching for me uh, does a good job, and I can. Uh, I can execute and end up in that championship. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see. I, 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 Swam, I'm going to prove the Swami wrong. That's what I'm. Well, the, the problem is, is if somehow um, because uh, Massey and Sears used to be teammates, right? Yeah. So let's say Sears is pitching for Massey, and Massey like lights up the middle on him. Massey ain't getting another pitch the rest of the, the rest of the round. So anyway, so the Swami ball calls Massey to be a two time home run derby champ. Now the manager's game. We got the East prevailing in the manager's game with Jimmy Walters winning the MVP with his outstanding hitting, hitting to all fields. But we got some problems on the West side. Potter pulls both hamstrings and spends the weekend icing his legs <laughs> and yelling at his umpires through his walkie-talkie since he can't run out the field and fire people. So Terry Dugan, he's playing, right? But he taps out after the first inning because he wants to go back to the bar and says, hey, guys, let's call it a game by everybody's shots, right? And then – Here's the big one. It's true. <laughs> Here's the big one. During the manager's game, uh, this is important stuff right here. During the manager's game, you guys ever watch pro wrestling when there's a mass wrestler and he finally gets his yes. mask ripped off and he gets exposed? Yeah, During the manager's game, the Swami will expose the COVID <laughs> clown and unmask him in front of everybody. <laughs> I predict that to happen right here. Kobe the COVID clown, clown will be exposed on Friday it. night during the game. Yeah, I'm telling you, the COVID clown has already amassed a certain amount of hatred, and they, they don't understand that. Like, unlike the Zingbot, Zingbot was a robot. COVID clown, for some reason, it's like he's affecting he's nasty. people differently. Ah, oh, he's, he's it's like nasty. more human, and it's yeah. The COVID people. clown, he just spit, he's spewing out information without any emotion. The COVID <laughs> clown, he's got emotion behind it, so he will be exposed on Friday night for all to see. Okay. Gold division. Did I miss something? Yeah, we're going to gold, right? Gold. So we're not going to do silver this year because it's too hard to project who's going to – Swami Ball, to, he doesn't want to mess with who gets down to the gold because it's, no matter what, nobody's happy, right? They, oh, we were get predicted to win silver. That means we're going to only win gold. So we don't even go there. We don't want to piss anybody off. Before That's a good idea. Go. Right. So here's gold. So I got some notes here. So last year, the top six teams, teams one, two, three, four, and then tied for five, Angel Armour. Mid-majors, Louisville, Maryland Outlaws, majors, mid-majors, NorCal Degenerates, not coming this year, Houston Heat, majors, mid-majors, Chicago. So of the top six, only two of them are back in gold this year, Louisville and Chicago. The Swami ball rubbed the ball, and guess what? Neither one of them even cracked the top five this year. Nope. Top five this year, the fourth place team in an upset game, Sin City Saints over Oklahoma, Joe's boys. Fourth place, <laughs> Sin City Saints. Third place, this is going to shock. They got a lot of shockers in the goal division. A team that nobody talks about, but we've seen him do amazing things this year. At a Tampa Bay center mass, finishes third place in goal. Second place. And it's a good thing they're finishing second instead of first because no team should win mid-majors and then also win gold, Team Texas. The word is they look stacked in Waxahachie. The Swami ball saw what they did, took some teams to the – Trini, you were there. You tell me what they look like. They look like a second-place gold team? Like Here's what I'll tell you. You're talking about Team Texas, right? Team Texas. Gold division. So – I love my Texas teams. You know, I it, it's very hard to be able to give comments that are negative. I will say this. From what I understand, there's a, a little bit of a shakeup because Texas teams are, you know, it's, it's difficult because there's been a lot of movement. And when there's movement, there's a change in beliefs, a change in, um, you know, a camaraderie or synergy. And synergy is very important. If you don't have a synergy, if you don't have a chemistry, you can have you can bring a, together an all-star team, but that does not mean that that equals success. On the books, when you know when you have people come together, 
it, it, it takes sometimes a, a synergy or a chemistry to be able to say, you know, hey, I'm going to go to bat for the next guy as opposed to going to bat for my own, you know, stats. And so when you see something like that happen, and I'm not saying that that's necessarily Team Texas, but it's difficult when you're trying to reorganize and bring people in from the outside in and to be able to form some. We did that. You know, SA Law, Team Texas, we got together. It, it didn't jive necessarily. So although we had the most talent, it does not mean that it was the best fit. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, I will tell you that Houston Hustle, there's um, the, the um, different teams from, t from Texas that are going to show up in Vegas that I think you're going to be surprised, man. I think Texas it's going to be Fugitives look pretty oh, good. Fugitives. And, and I'm telling you right now, the Fugitives – multiple in multiple tournaments texas fugitives are going to make some noise it's going to be interesting and i think you're going to be happy jeff because we're bringing those texas teams in and i believe that you know fugitives is a, a great example of a team that's going to make some noise that nobody's ever heard of on the off the radar. okay so we got Team Texas, number two per the Swami ball, regardless of whatever kind of drama they have. The bottom line is talent sometimes just prevails, especially because they're dropping out of the goal division. So they're going to see a different level of pitching, a different level of defense. They should be just fine. But the number one team, and I I'm almost guarantee none of you guys would have guessed this, but you're making a mistake. The Swami ball says South Florida is going to win this thing. South Florida Lawman. So two teams out of Florida in the top three, Center Mass and South Florida. South Florida Lawman, Gold Division champions. You heard it here first. Now we'll move on to mid-majors. Mid-majors. Here's the thing with mid-majors, right? Hey, Jeff, real quick, let me interrupt you. I want to I want to say something. Trini took me a while to put me back on here with you, but that South Florida prediction, I like it. I, th those guys added a lot of young talent on that on that team. I saw them down in Florida a couple times this year. They are going to be a tough team. And I, I, I was I had a conversation. You said my boys in Oklahoma. I had a conversation with Beal um, about last week about that. I, I was telling him South Florida, I think, is a team to beat in, in gold. I like that pick. That, and they're coming deep, 18 guys of the full yeah. roster. So – uh, okay, so mid-major. Mid-major is a little different, right? Because we don't know for sure who's going to be in mid-majors, right? So the top mid-majors teams, in theory, could be playing in majors, right? Because they won one of the four boards. So so when the Swami ball, it made it tough for the Swami ball because he didn't have a clear idea who was going to be in mid-majors. But here's how the Swami ball thinks it's gonna, is going to play out. The third-place team in mid-majors, another Florida team, the Miami Metro Dogs. We like the dogs. We saw what they did in, uh, was it, uh, was it Azleton? And then uh, perhaps the Scolo tournament. We've seen them beat some major teams. Third place seems about right for them. In second place, up and coming team, probably one of the most underrated teams. Could definitely compete in majors, but they got a tough round robin draw. So they'll probably end up in mids. I 80 Cartel, that Iowa Nebraska team. And in first place, and this one's a shocker. This one's this one. This one surprised even the Swami, because I'm not. I don't. You know, the Swami ball tells me what to say, right? Out of Texas, Houston Heat. Trini, what do you think about Houston Heat winning mid majors? It's not that far off. I mean, these guys are. I'm telling you, Texas teams are underrated. That's my personal opinion. Swami, don't get pissed. Don't cast a spell on me. Yeah. I, I believe that Texas teams are underrated, and I believe Texas is bringing the heat. That's what I believe. Houston Heat is a great pick. I like that a lot. Um, they got they got a great team. Uh, the last two years, they've done really well, and uh, I can see that. I, I like both those picks, South Florida for gold and Houston Heat for the mid-major. Okay. Okay, here we go. So we got a couple of uh, – Round robin upsets um, that I want to uh, talk about here, and then we'll talk about majors. So one of them is we're going to have, according to the Swami Ball, the Miami Dogs, the team that's going to win or finish third in mid majors, is going to score an upset over the Hounds. So we got them, uh, we got them uh, beating the Hounds. We have State Forty Eight, that Arizona team that impressed everybody in uh, San Diego. 
they ended up being the lowest seed in their bracket, even though they're guaranteed to go to majors. Swami Ball's got information that they're missing their pitcher. They kind of don't have all the right guys there. So we'll see how that goes. Another upset is the Maryland Outlaws over Nassau in the round robin. And then here's one. In a very, very tough bracket, Riverside Forest wins the bracket and they win one of the major bursts. So Riverside Forest with George Reyes. They got the conference player, Carlos Vasquez, who played with the L.A. Blue. They got Ray G. Just a really young up-and-coming team ends up getting one of those four majors bursts, as does San Antonio. So oh, Trini ends God. up in the majors. Joe, I'm sorry we show mid, we show Missouri going to mid majors with uh, eight and a half players. Yeah, and Sw- the- Swami must have saw my roster. Yeah, <laughs> eight and a half <laughs> players. Swami must not have seen my roster. <laughs> eight and a half players. So, but for now, let's go back to majors here. So majors is I'm, we're just going to talk about three teams. These are the I call these the big three. These are the ones the ones that jump out to me as being. Just having a great year, all of them having a great run. Um, third place, Great Lakes Lawman. So I would have had them first place earlier this year, but the Swami Ball saw something in Waxahachie he didn't quite like. Um, usually a team that's going to win the World Series would not get waxed as bad as they got waxed by Minnesota. So Jay-Z is going to hate the Swami for what you just said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the fa- the numbers don't lie. The, the, all the information goes in the Swami ball. It's like, hey, if you're the world champions, you can't go out and lose, was 25 to 1 or whatever that score was, some ridiculous score. That just that's doesn't that's happen. That's what right? The, that's what the Haxi, pa- Wax and Haxi Pumpkin's saying. Now, right? the, good, the, the good news is they'll get some redemption because they will eliminate the fourth-place team, Minnesota. So Minnesota goes fourth. Great Lakes goes third. Minnesota is strong, though. Yeah, but Great Lakes is going to get the redemption, but it's not going to. It's just going to. It's going to take it out of them. It's just because what's going to happen is we're going to. And this is not sexy at all. The Swami Ball. The other ones were kind of interesting and intriguing. This is not intriguing. It's going to be a rematch of what it was in 2019. SinCal Connection or the Connection against LAPD Blue. And guess what? Same results. I hate to say it. LAPD blue <laughs> limping around all year, half the squad, haven't been playing, hurting for bodies. Swami Ball saw the roster. Every one of those son of a guns are going to be there. Great. You know, like, oh, my gosh, they don't have chemistry. Listen, this is not synchronized swimming. It's softball. You don't need a whole lot of chemistry to play softball. You show up. The bottom line is they're just going to out-talent everybody. I mean, they got conference player after conference player after conference player. And, yes, Keith Habig is pitching for him. LAPD Blue, back-to-back champions over the connection. There you heard it. There you go. There, there's there's some good teams that you left out of the left out of the top four there, man. But, I mean, those top four are, t- are all tough. It's, I, the top I only have four numbers, Joe. I, I, I get four. it. The, the top eight teams, I mean, those, those guys are, uh, you know, it, it can go either any, any way. But, no, I, you can't go wrong with LAPD. I know who they're bringing. It's, uh, that's going to be a tough team to beat. Here's why. I mean, I this like Mike. You guys know Mike Schneider. Mm-hmm. Like, like if when that guy steps on the field, he 100 expects to win. He is shocked if they don't win. It's like personally insulting to him if they don't win the game. Like he created this term back in the day called DFM. Like who's their next opponent? DFM. They literally don't even. These guys don't even go look at the board to see who they're playing next. Like uh, just tell us when and where. Like that kind of attitude. I just don't see it with some of the other teams yet. When the, these guys are accustomed to winning world championship after world championship, world, I just I just think they're going to out talent the teams and just out attitude them and out swagger them. And of course, there's going to be drama afterwards because there's going to be guys that played all year sitting the bench. That they'll deal with that later. Somehow it always works out. <laughs> they always come back. <laughs> they always come back. Somehow uh, it works out. So uh, that's what I got hey, for you guys. You're getting some advice. The Swami's not just the. You know the sole predictor of things. I mean, uh, the Swami gets Swami information. Has Swami has some outside yeah. consultation. The Swami sees all the <laughs> rosters and then says, "Hey, all, all these people on your roster are going to be there." Yes, yeah. okay. Right. And by the way, that outside Swami consultant is checking IDs, so you better bring your shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you better bring, make sure you know nobody's questioning her. The, so, the biggest uh, I would like to see some comments on here later, though, is like, who is the COVID clown? I've not people haven't talked <laughs> about this. I, 
<laughs> I think he's, he's getting unmasked, man. It's going to be like pro wrestling. He's getting unmasked. Let me, let me tell you this. I, I had a couple me, thoughts me, about okay. that. Okay, Joe. No, no, no. I'm just saying I got a pr- couple ideas about who it is. Okay. I got, I got two names in particular. I'm not going to say it, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm spot on with with, with uh, who I think it is. That's, ba- that's based off of text messages that came in uh, around the same time as posts were made. So I'm not going to say the name, Trini. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I will tell you is that I'm happy. You know, Zingbot, sometimes people may not associate or uh connect so well with the robot but when the covid clown like dude we all went through covid everybody can connect with the COVID <laughs> yeah, clown. right right so yeah. when the covid clown speaks it's like in a more direct fashion and it's like one of those things where it's like you have to be able to realize this is real like we're really hitting a nerve and the covid clown hit a nerve he's a dick and here's what i'll tell you <laughs> here's what i'll tell you jeff is my own team was like, hey, what's up with this? And I'm like, dude, you're supposed to understand where this is coming from. And they were like, they were pissed. I mean, you got fucking blood boiling. You got <laughs> emotions going. And I was like, no, 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 no. Take it easy. Take it easy. So it, it actually, uh, the, the person who was the COVID clown did me a big favor this year. I really didn't know. Like it was like a, a made up email address, the whole bit. Um, I was able to figure it out via IP address tracking, even though he used a different IP address every time. So he was pretty good. But what he, how he helped me out was there's so much work that goes into it. I didn't have to do the the, the comments from that's cool. Zingbot this year. So nah, it was nice. That's, cool. That, yeah. nah, that's cool. Hey, listen. So in the end, we're going to wrap this up. So we have 39 viewers, probably one of our highest viewed uh, podcasts, video podcasts. And here's what I'll tell you. Jeff, when you said just block them, it, it is what it is. I mean, that's a personal attack on my business, you know, and my livelihood and what I stand for with my character. My, my and I didn't win all those awards in the PS.com community because it was not worthy of it. So this company comes here, does what they do. It is what it is. Not going to give them any more attention, but at the same time, this is an example of what Jeff, Dale, Joe, and me, and Dan McIntyre, and all these other people that contribute to our circuit. It's like, this is what we deal with in our civilian life, and it's not supposed to be here. Right. This is our, this is our safety net. This right. is where we're supposed to be able to have people who are here for the betterment of what we're trying to do here, and that is uh an outlet it's it it's it's an ability to be able to express ourselves within a community that we cherish and these people have come in and so jeff when you say just block them and it is what it is it's not that easy for me because if anybody comes to the world series and tries to disrupt disrupt what it is that we're there for I will defend that. I will stand and defend that because like we all will, that's our home. You come into our home, that's different. In uniform, what we do, you know, you know, out in our community, that's different. But in our home, no, you're not going to come here. So that's why I took a stand. And ultimately, I will fight this. It'll be done. These guys will be taken care of. But I, I absolutely want to say that i appreciate that right before the world series we're here to be able to talk about something that's so special to me joe you're here you know in your work environment jeff you're here as a retiree you could do a lot of different things but you're here to be able to foster that camaraderie and so that's what it's about we will stand we will defend what we believe in and then you know, we'll deal with it afterwards. So thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate it. Swami, I appreciate it. Joe, thank you so much. Hey, man, this is the Police Softball Podcast. Trinity Trinidad, do not forget that I got your six.